that I have contest fees deducted according to the rules of the New Jersey State Preachers Preachers Scholastic Athletic Association and the Hillsborough Township Public School District. These rules provide fair competition among players and spectators to help promote good sportsmanship by observing the rules of fair play. Any verbal, written, or physical conduct related to race, gender, ethnicity, disability, sexual orientation, or religion shall not be tolerated if subjects to violated rejection and may result in penalties being assessed against your team. Each individual is requested to take personal responsibility for keeping this competition at a high level of good sportsmanship. We also ask that you please observe the following NJSIAA and Hillsborough Board of Education rules. All fans attending outdoor events on Hillsborough Township Public School property must wear face coverings that cover your nose and mouth. All fans must follow social distancing guidelines and maintain a six feet distance from individuals not within your family's quarantine. Fans will not be permitted in the high school or field house for any reason. Outdoor bathrooms are provided to be found within the stadium by the main entrance along with a hand washing station. There is no smoking or use of tobacco products, including electronic cigarettes on school grounds. There is also no consumption or possession of alcoholic beverages on school grounds. Fans are not permitted in or out of playing area, bench area, or sideline before during or after the game. Please not interfere with players. Coming to you from Hillsborough High School here in Hillsborough, New Jersey. Hello, everybody. It's about time to have Hillsborough High School football here on YouTube and the HSG Network. Tonight, it is the Hillsborough Raiders taking on the Bridgewater Raritan Panthers. I'm Tom Wilkins, along with Art Elias, and Howard Gaber, of course, is behind the controls. We'll be uh, giving you a little preview of the game in just a couple of minutes. Um, I'm not sure if there's going to uh, be the anthem or if they're going to do the coin toss. It's like 50-50, so. So we're going to go ahead, I believe, down the field and see what happens here in a moment. Um, just to be, give you a little. So as soon as the anthem is done, we'll come back and we'll uh, go ahead and give you a little preview of the game. So please stay with us. Introduce the coaches for tonight. Panthers head coach is Scott Perez, who is assisted by Joe Cahill, Joe Chatham, Colin Clifford, Vincenzo DeStefano, Dave Zamaski, Michael Franchino, Ed Knapp, James Davis, Evan Rosenberg, and Austin Adler. Your Raiders head coach, Kevin Party Jr., he is assisti assisted by Brandon Weider, Don Adams. Rocco Mazzagatti, Kevin Party Jr., Wayne Briggs, Justin Blutzak, James Smith, Matt Hughes, and Ben Toriello. It's usually 50-50 when it comes to these things. Uh, some places they'll do the anthem and then the coin flip here. They're doing the coin flip and then the anthem. Just so you know, Hillsborough's uh, captain is number 88, Aiden Lugo, the senior. He's out there with one of the Bridgewater Raritan players as we are about to get underway. You must remember during COVID, only one person comes out from each team, obviously for a safety uh, protocol reasons here. So, of course, Hillsborough will be in their home maroon with gold helmets and numerals. Bridgewater Raritan, they will be in their all whites with blue numerals. And it looks like, um, oh, Hillsborough won the toss and refuses the second half. So Bridgewater Raritan will receive the ball first. So with that said, let's go ahead and uh, take it down for our national anthem. We'll have that in a moment and then come back and I'll bring Art into play.
else we're good now all right we just had our national anthem here from hillsborough high school we just had to switch a little bit of equipment here and just a side note of course even though two days uh, late of course our sincerest and most gracious gratitude to all the veterans who have served in our country and we of course thank you all for your service especially all of you who have tuned in today all right well art elias has joined me now he is uh put on a headset and art he got Basically, two 500 teams: Bridgewater two and two, Hillsboro three and three. What do you expect in this one? Well, Tom, so it's uh, it is a playoff football, and uh, you know this time of year uh, in New Jersey, we like to uh, think about let's think about the weather first and see, you know, what we've had. We've got a nice turf field. We've had a lot of rain the last few days. There was some fog rolling in. It's nice and cool tonight. So I don't think weather will be a factor in the game. Um, but we do have two different kind of teams: the Hillsboro who has had success throwing the ball this year, and uh, Broward and Ridgewater who has success running the ball. So it's a, it's a uh, it's a good balance, and we'll see what happens. All right, we are underway here in Hillsborough as the kickoff taken at about the 15 yard line, slide over to the 25 and down to the 31 yard line. That's number 43, Antoine Hinton, the sophomore. Makes a nice return. As we said, Bridgewater wearing their all white road uniforms with blue numerals and white helmets. Hillsboro all in maroon with gold numerals and helmets. Bridgewater will move left to right, Hillsboro right to left, and we'll switch sides here in the second quarter. 43 degrees here at game time here in Hillsboro, and thankfully the rain and drizzle and yuck got out of here by lunchtime. And we've got a cool night, but it's going to be a very interesting night to say the least. Okay, so Bridgewater starts with their quarterback, Grady Cradilla, the junior as he is lined up basically in a modified eye to begin proceedings with two receivers on the left. First and 10, ball spot at the 31 yard line. This is a handoff bouncing up the middle. That's Ryan McKinney. McKinney has some nice room and he's able to get to the 44 yard line before being brought down. Troy Candy and Will Dixon helped with the stop. But it's yep. the first down again at 13. Bridgewater Rarity and go and hurry up offense. That was designed to go inside. There was nothing there, so he bounced it out. Nice run. Same formation as before from the 24 off a high snap. Oh. But this time, look who goes down. Ryan McKinney absolutely plastered by Leo Shiro, the junior. I mean, he just met him and threw him way back for a loss. About five on the floor. Yeah, he didn't even, he'd had no chance. It, he, he's lucky there was no fumble there he literally got hit just as the ball was being handed to him so uh, nice job uh, by the defense of Hillsborough all right so it'll be they're only going to save to the 42 so a generous spot second and 12 as Cardile is going to screen this one on the far side and it ends up being incomplete so obviously I would think it was heading into a McKinney's direction and he just couldn't haul it down. So third and long coming for the Panthers. Yeah, he had McKinney coming out of the backfield on a swing pass and uh, he had a little bit of a lane coming up the sideline there, but I think he just might have taken his uh, just might have taken his eye off the ball and looked downfield before he had it. Well, usually you would see Bridgewater Raritan. They do a lot of running to say the least, but a lot of times they want to change the tempo up and already they went fast forward and Hillsborough has been ready. This time they go empty gun here, heavy on the left. Third and 12 from the 42-yard line. Here's Kardila. He's back. Now he's under a rush to the left. He's going to heave one out the middle of the field. And that one is intercepted. Here comes, I believe that's a Makwa. A Makwa taking it to midfield. The 40, the 30. He's going to have a pick six. And no flags. Clear the area. Welcome to the end zone for Thomas Amakwa as one of the officials falls as Amakwa runs back. So a pick six for Thomas Amakwa, and what a start for the Hillsborough Raiders. Uh, Tom, you and I have seen Amakwa plenty of times this year, and we know how fast he is, and that's why they use him on defense, because he's a great athlete, and, and just a tipped ball. Uh, I, I, you know, he's throwing that in some coverage there, and a nice tip, and he was... He was in the right place at the right time, dropped right in his lap and off to the races. And they'll, they'll unlock the swinging gate here at some point here as we go for the uh, conversion, which, by the way, that score, we got to tell you, that's uh, brought to you by Cater to Fair at Borough Center, 424 Route 206 South in Hillsboro. They've served Somerset County for 25 years. You can call them at 908-874-7790. Now comes the extra point. It'll be Vaughn Pulva to try and put it through, but wait a minute. We got a flag down. Somebody got moving a little early. 
And yes, indeed, a false start. And I'll be at a 25-yard extra point. Do you think that changes uh, the possibility of making it a two-point conversion? Not that they're uh, – Colt uh, was a very good uh, extra point. He, he's a good field goal kicker for them. He's a, he's a big fella. He's got a big leg. So uh, just another chip for him. All right, so this will be a 25-yard extra point for Colva following the, the false start penalty. Here's the snap. Kick on its way. That sail Samuel Roden good to make it 7 nothing Hillsborough. What a tremendous start for the defense. We got to check this Pez Electric replay as Art explains the pick six by Amakwa. Yeah, so we watch uh, Cordell. He, he, he drops back. He gets a little bit of pressure and uh, kind of bails to his left here. And uh, he had plenty of time to step into it. He sees some pressure come up the middle. He steps. He throws. He sees something that he likes. And, uh, he, you know, th there was two receivers in the area at the same time. Now this is just get your head downfield, get your guys in front of you. There was plenty of, uh, plenty of maroon jerseys to, to block the rest of those guys. And, again, Amakwa, uh, we, we know that we've seen Amakwa plenty of times. He's so fast, and he, he relishes plays like this. And that's a 68-yard at about the 12-yard line. Making his way to about the 25, but not much further down to the 27-yard line once again. That's Antoine Hitton, the sophomore, who was able to return that. By the way, forgot to mention on that conversions presented by Iron Peak Sports and Events, located at 137 Mountain View Road in Hillsboro. Give them a call for their uh, events and all that stuff, 908-398-2139. Yeah, good coverage by the special teams unit of Hillsboro. That's two in a row now. Now, I don't think that Bridgewater Raritan was looking to start the game like that, so... Uh, I don't. Let's see if they come back with a little uh, something different now. Get back to the running game like they're used to. All right. So first and ten, they're gonna spot the twenty-seven yard line, and again they'll have McKinney, and he'll get over to about the thirty-yard line that time. So pick up a two on the play, and and Strats was able to make the stop. So I'll say a gain of close to three. They're gonna give him the thirty-one. Yeah, they were just uh, kind of eye backfield, uh, eye formation backfield, and and just a uh, power lead right up the gut inside there. So that they're going to try to test the inside of uh, Hillsborough's defense. Now we've seen some teams uh, have some success running the ball uh, on Hillsborough up the middle. So if you're watching the tape, the coaches, and they're looking at some of the game film we saw during the year, might, they might be trying that for a little while tonight to see if they can soften it up. Well, it looks like Bridgewater wired and had some personnel issues, so they're going to take their first time out, and we will do the same with 10.05 left in the first. 7 nothing Hillsborough over Bridgewater Raritan. We're back in a moment. All right, just in the nick of time, we're back into action. Second and seven from the 31-yard line as Kodila will take the snap, looking the pass. He's under a rush. He's in trouble, and he's going to go way down at the 10. The ball pops out. I think Bridgewater Raritan fell on it. Or no, maybe not, because coming I, out with this, Tyler Mitchner. I think the official's calling him down. He was on his way backwards. They, I think they're going to say his forward progress was stopped, pretty sure. Or in this case, backward progress, because yeah, that's progress. a huge loss on the play. Yeah, and it was a big hit. He got he got smothered by about three defenders there. And so after that enormous sack, I believe, yeah, the officials did roll him down, so it is Bridgewater ball. Unfortunately for them, it is third and like 26 to go. So we'll see how Cardilla decides to dial it up and, and they decide to give it to him. McKinney gets some positive yardage and he's able to do so to about the 18 yard line. Yeah, I don't think they were looking to try anything there because they had to get all the way almost out to the 40 yard line for a first down. So uh, just run the ball and uh, try to punt it out of here and get some better field position. And Hillsborough will get their first offensive possession already with a seven nothing lead thanks to the pick six. And, and punting will be uh, Sam Valeria, who is a sophomore kicker, he's standing at about the six-yard line. Gets a good snap. They are coming, but he gets it off. And they look for a fair catch. 
and I don't know exactly what happened, was down at about the 40-yard line. Waiting for it was Ethan Mays, the senior, but he pulled back at the very last second. So Hillsborough in plus territory already with a 7-0 lead and their opening possession. Yeah, they're going to give them the ball at the third. It looks like the 36 uh, or 37 because they can't, uh, once the ball hits a, hits a kick team, that's where it's got to be down. Uh, you know, when, when, the, uh, when the receiving team signals for a fair catch, the players are taught to, you know, slow down. They can't run into them. Everybody slowed down and the ball clunks somebody on the leg there. So, All right, so I must not have seen it, but... Whatever the case, it is first and 10, and quarterback James Misvera will give it a shot here with a four-receiver set on first and 10, and he's going to hand it off to Levin Nidas, who plows his way for a couple positive yards to about the 33-yard line before being brought down by Colin Cordyla, as well as Alan Lee, the senior. Yeah, and Levin is the man that they give the ball to. He's uh, He's got over uh, 500 and... Uh, almost 550 yards rushing this year and he's averaging 7.8 yards a, a rush well he got three that time it is second and seven and he's got to turn this one and pass to Amakwa. miss tackle escapes another but not a third goes down for a yard at about the 34 i think it was ryan mckinney who made the stop but colin cardiola the sophomore was able to slow him down just enough if you're bridgewater raritan's defense tonight you've got to identify where uh Larry Antis is, and you've got to identify where uh, 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 Levinatis is, and you've got to identify where Imakwa is because those are the two. Those are the two big play, play players for uh, Hillsborough. No gain on the play, so third and seven. They're going to go four receivers tripling to right. Nizvera back. He's going to throw to the right and moving over, making the catch at about the thirty yard line and crashing into the sticks. It's going to be close. Ethan Mays with the reception. It all depends on the spot of the ball. And they may call the chain gang for this one. And while they do that, real quick, we want to let you know we want to send our gratitude to the Hillsborough Raider Township. I'm sorry, the Hillsborough Raider Touchdown Association, led by President Bruce Wayne, who has provided funding for today's game on YouTube. They uh, they did signal for a first down there, so they they gave him the spot. So no measurement necessary. And Ms. Vera will come back into play. And this time they will triple the left side in the four receiver set. Back to the left, probably Levinitis. First and 10 from the 27-yard line. Ms. Vera back in the pocket. He's going to take a shot down the field oh. and through the hands oh. incomplete. A nice try. Troy Kennedy, the entire receiver, the senior, but just a little bit high. He just couldn't haul it down. Oh, hit him in the hands. So we'd like to like, like to see him pull haul that in. He, uh, he had two receivers open. He had the tight end open. Uh, just pretty much just a, uh, a streak pattern, just going right down the middle. So... Uh, Bridgewater Raritan, if they're if they're going to be able to throw the ball like that tonight, uh, Hillsboro, Bridgewater Raritan is going to be in trouble on defense. They got to lock that down. Second and ten, ball spot at the twenty-seven yard line again, tripling the left side. Ms. Vera will take this one under a heavy rush, but he gets a screen off the Levin who breaks to the twenty yard line and in the first down territory at about the twelve. He lost out. the ball. He lost the ball, and Bridgewater recovers. Oh, they had the perfect play called on that, and uh, that's why he had a rush. The lineman let him in. They had a perfect screen set up. Levin Itis, uh, you, you know, he likes to fight for that yardage, but uh, w once you're fighting for that extra yardage, you got to secure the ball. So uh, somebody came in and uh, and uh, caused the strip. And that's going to give Bridgewater Raritan some life. I mean, he had the figure. Hillsborough already up 7-0. They had a chance to double the lead. They get into the red zone. Unfortunately, they turned the ball over. So a tough break there. Yeah, they dodged a bullet. Well, for Bridgewater Raritan, they've had two possessions. Unfortunately, the first one didn't work out so well. And now on first and 10, here's Brady Cordyla handing this one off and crossing. He, oh, kept, actually, it. And he yep. kept it that time. Yep. I'm sorry. He faked me out. And he gets to about the 15-yard line for a couple-yard pickup. Yeah, he faked me out too. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, he's. I guess they're going to test. Like I said, they're going to test. They're going to. They're going to key on the running back there, test the running back. And I believe you had told me before the broadcast time that the quarterback is the leading rusher of the uh, of Bridgewater Roward, and so that's uh, we should see more of that tonight. Well, don't forget Ryan McKinney has some yardage too. But interestingly enough, their leading receiver is Bryce Myers, the senior tight end. So we'll keep an eye on him as we go throughout the game. On second and nine. Here's Cardiola will roll to the left. He's being rushed. He's in trouble, and he's going to have to throw it. It's luckily over the head of McKinney, incomplete. At least there was a receiver in the area. Otherwise, that would have been intentional grounding. Yeah, he was trying to hit the slot receiver on a quick slant. He uh, it was covered. Uh, he he kind of uh, he, he he kind of gave it a gave it a 
looked like he was going to throw it again a second time and then decided to pull it down. Uh, it's good that he unloaded it because he was headed towards the end zone line there. So, All right, so it looks to be about a third and a long nine as, once again, Brady Cardiola, the junior quarterback, has a triple on the right side, takes a snap, rolling right, spins out of a sack. Will he get out of a second? What well, he will, but the pass is incomplete. That was head in the direction of Dylan Corsi, the junior wide receiver, but he was not able to come up with it, so the turnover did not result in any points, so Bridgewater Raritan will punt. So, so two, two series with Bridgewater Raritan, and we've seen throws downfield where at the end of the play, receivers are in the same area. So that's one of two reasons. Either they're not breaking off their route and finding the open area, or they're, uh, they're not running the right route. So It's actually three uh, series if you include the interception. Now the punt is going to about the 32, but there was a flag down right at the snap, so we'll see what this is all about. So from what it looks, it looks like a Hillsborough is going to get great field position, and considering the fact that they weren't able to uh, convert when they were in plus territory before, it's going to be an illegal formation foul against Bridgewater Raritan, which will be refused, and Hillsborough will end up getting the first down. Yeah, they uh, it look, and it, I look like the punter was trying to uh, was trying to run that on a line drive. There, it looked like he was trying to give it a give it a a, a punt down the field on a line drive and not kick it up in the air. So uh, they will start. Hillsborough will start with great field position. Okay, and by the way, Bruce Brock and Fuso is your uh, official for today's game. So first and 10 from the 32-yard line as Ms. Vera back the pass. He's going to throw a deep one. It's going to be a little bit high incomplete for Will Dixon, the junior receiver. A little bit high, just couldn't bring it down, makes it second and 10. Yeah, I think they went back to that. I think Coach saw what I saw uh, on that last drive. Uh, they had two receivers down the middle of the field wide open. Dixon was the other one. Um, uh, when they tried to throw it uh, along the last play, so why not try it again? And he he is he's a big target. He's six five, and he and he cre with his hands up in the air, he creates a nice target for uh, the quarterback down the middle of the field. All right, so second and ten now from the thirty two yard line. Ms. Vera in the shotgun, they'll evenly divide the receivers this time. The Levin will get the ball, spin out of a tackle, and get to about the twenty eight yard line. Picks up four to play, but forces a third and six. And by the way, other officials today, John Dupree's the umpire. Ronald Burka is the linesman. Side judge is Troy Stevenson. Line judge is James Muscarillo. And the field judge is Sazma Isom. So Panna, the uh, defensive lineman there for Bridgewater Raritan. Good play inside. I right, so strong. third and six from the 30. Here's Ms. Vera back. He's going to throw to the left side a little high, but the pass is caught. And taking about the 23, I think it's going to be enough for a first down. Amakwa was the one who caught it. Depends on the spot of the ball. I it might like be a little he, short. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Okay. Maybe a half a yard. Maybe half a yard short. Now that's Amakwa's job there to break off that route over the first down line. So it looks like he cut that a little early, and you can credit uh, Joe Weibolt. Uh, the the cornerback there, the defensive back for tackling a good open field tackle. Well, they're going for it on fourth and a yard. They're going to triple the right. Four receivers here. Somebody moved, but they didn't make the call. But they're going to go Levinitis up no, the middle. I don't think he got it. Bridgewater says no, but it depends on the spot, and I think he may have lost a yard. I think he's going to be short, Tom, because they're not going to. It's not like in the NFL where you can push the runner down the field. As soon as his forward progress is stopped, the whistle blows, and that's it. Nope, they didn't make it. So Bridgewater Raritan, despite their opening mistake, they have held steadfast on two straight drives. Uh, Hillsboro in Bridgewater territory has not come up with anything. And Bridgewater is able to get it back first and ten. Nice work by the inside defensive linemen and uh, linebackers of the uh, of Bridgewater Raritan. Good job. They uh, they stuffed it nice. Yeah, this is this is going to be a little bit of a tug of war, I would think. They're going to spot the ball at about the twenty five yard line, and already their fourth possession. Brady Cradilla under center this time, and this is going to be a handoff. Different running back this time. Not much of anything there. I believe that was C.J. Stevens, the fullback this time, and maybe he gets a yard. Yeah, Stevens is a sophomore, and uh, he looks, you know, he's a uh, he's a good-sized kid, and he it looked like they were trying to give him a quick hitter uh, right up the middle again. Now he goes right out, and the Panthers decide to go with another uh, package here. 
So Cordillo will line up in a shotgun. They're gonna looks like they're gonna triple the left side again and keep the right empty. Second and nine. Here's Cordillo back looking. He's gonna fire one and it goes in the direction of Antoine Smith, the senior receiver, and ends up going incomplete. Yeah, Smith was running and out uh, at the pylon there or at the uh, at the marker and. Uh, he got uh, that pass was down and away. Uh, he's got to, for him to be able to turn that up and get that yardage. The ball's got to be up a little higher so that he can catch it with his hands and and turn towards the sideline and get upfield. Third and nine now is the ball spot at the twenty-five yard line. And let's see how they try and line everything up here. They might go empty gun again. They will empty backfield. They'll go heavy on the left. Cordyla alone the shotgun takes the snap. He's looking, waiting. Now he's going to run. He's being chased. He's going to throw left side. Oh, he loops that one. And oh, they, wow. Oh, he never came up with it. Huh. Wow. Dylan Corsi, he was the guy who had it. It looked to be a great grab, but unfortunately couldn't secure it. I don't know if he lost in the lights, but a tough break there. When, when you that, want that reliable work, easy. trust family-owned A&B Landscaping and to make your property look its best. With over 25 years of experience, our design team will... Okay, we had a little <laughs> technical glitch there. And you can see... Under pressure, he dumps it right into uh, right into Corsi's lap there, and he just uh, just didn't come up with it. Yeah, and the punt, not very successful there. He does get a little bit of a bounce, and it will go around to about the 41-yard line. So for the third straight time, the Hillsborough Raiders are going to start in plus territory and again to 41. And, and I'll tell you what, Art, that's got to be a tough break for Corsi because that looked like he almost had it. Well, he I'll, I'll tell you what, it, it was a great pass. He dumped it right in right in his uh, right in his lap and I guess what happened was he 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 was you know, he had a lot of room in front of him there. The defenders were kind of behind him, so you know, I'm thinking he might have uh he might have wanted to get going before he had full control of the ball. And I'm pretty sure that uh that's the second time Bridgewater Raritan is kicking off to the side into the sideline. I guess they don't want to kick it to the uh, to the return man of, of uh, Hillsborough. They send a Makwa in motion. And it looks like he will take the jet sweep, and unfortunately, Bridgewater Raritan totally read that one, and he loses a lot of yardage, possibly as far back as the 46. That's a five-yard loss. What a good job by the Panthers. They were on the prowl, and they read that play beautifully. Yep, the best way a defense can stop the jet sweep is that defensive end or that uh, that outside linebacker that's standing up on the on the edge there. As soon as he sees that motion come his way, he's got a knife across the line. And, and even if the guy doesn't get the ball, you give him a pop and you let him know that you know he's coming next time. And, and that's the way to stop that jet sweep, best way. And I think several of them saw where that was going. They immediately converged on the middle, and Amakwa did not have a chance on that one. They'll triple the right on second and 15, and the handoff is going to go to about the 46-yard line. Again, no gain on the play for Levin Nitus. I'll tell you what, Panther defense doing its job, even though um, they've, they've been put against the wall twice, and they've succeeded both times. They're looking to go three for three. Yep, Hillsborough tried a little counter left there and did not work. There was too much penetration. The counter will not work if you have defensive line penetration. That's, the, that's just the way it is with that. Again, they'll triple the right on third and 15 from the 46. Ms. Varen, the shotgun, will take it. Has some time. He's going to throw deep and almost oh. brought in by a mock with a little bit high. It would have been a great catch if he came up with it, but it was a little high. Yeah. It is incomplete, and Hillsborough will have to punt. He would have had issues with the sideline there. I don't know if his uh, his uh, momentum going uh, up the field and left, would have, if he would have been able to get those feet down. But uh, I'll tell you what, it dro the quarter had dropped it right in where it had to be, over the cornerback before the safety. Um, so it would have been an, it would have been an outstanding play had he pulled it in. All right, so Hillsborough will punt. They get a last second substitution in. It'll be McKinney standing for the punt. A big Look rush out. by uh, the Panthers, and big rush. It'll be left alone. The ball will stay put at the 23-yard line, and Bridgewater Raritan will have yet another possession. By the way, just so you know, Hillsborough Raider football presented by A and B Landscaping. You can uh, check more of their services out online at ablandscapingnj.com, or you can call them. They're out Hillsborough 908-240-8784. Yeah, the, the, uh, that was very, very close to being blocked. I saw two white jerseys making their way in the backfield, and uh, credit uh, credit Colva, he got that off quickly. 
Brady Cordyla under center here on first and 10. And they'll hand it off to McKinney. McKinney will plow his way to about the 28-yard line. So nice gain on a play, a gain of five. Yeah, and, and, and this is the second series now where we've seen uh, 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 Bridgewater come out with uh, the quarterback under center. So they're trying, they're, tr they're trying, again, in these playoff games with two teams that are evenly matched, it's a little bit of a chess match in the first quarter, and we've got about a minute and a half to go, and they, they, they feel each other out to see what they can get away with. Okay, two receivers on the right. Now they're going to send uh, Sal Chicali in motion on second down. Here's McKinney. McKinney, oh, he's getting tripped up behind the line of scrimmage. A good play on the part of Andrew Santa, the junior defensive lineman, brings him down for a little bit of a loss. Yeah, he was trying to get to that edge out there and bounce it out and uh, – Good penetration by Hillsborough. They got to his got to his laces and got him down. Mishnard also helped with that one. So after a three yard loss, it's third and eight. As we're coming down to almost a minute left here in the first quarter. And you're right, Art. It's been a bit of a chess match. We haven't really seen any huddling by either team. Nope, nope. Everybody's going from the line. Uh, that you know they they're obviously both used to this. this. Is how they run their offenses. So and there's an empty gun this time. Heavy on the right on third and nine. Cordyla back, looking, oh. runs into his own man, and down he goes. Bringing him down beautifully was Will Dixon, the junior, and uh, that's a second one already for Hillsborough's defense, and that will again force the Panthers to punt. Yeah, and that's a tough, uh, that's a tough assignment for, for an offensive lineman. Will Dixon, again, he's a tight end by trade, but a big defensive end. You know, 6'5", 225, 230, that's, uh, that's, a, big, that's a big boy out there, and, uh, and when he gets it moving, he can uh, get a nice pass rush going. Southern area. He's been hard at work in his first quarter. The punt's block. blocked. The punt's block. It's there for the end zone. And there it is. A touchdown block return for Aiden Lugo. That's his area to clear. And Hillsborough with not only a defensive touchdown, a special team score with 12 seconds left in the first. Hillsborough gets the lead and extends it. What a tremendous special teams play. Yeah, the punter on Bridgewater Rarity, a great rush up the middle. The punter on Bridgewater Rarity just taking a little bit too much time to get that off. And when you're when you're back there with your back against the uh you know, back against the goal line there, you really got to get it. You really got to get the ball and get it out of there. Luga must have studied what the Colts did against the Titans in the second half yesterday, it. no question. So here's the extra point for Juan Colva. The snap, kick on its way, and that will make it 14-0 Hillsborough. What a first quarter for the defense and special teams of the Raiders. I think we shall see how that block punt, and this will make Colts fans very proud, too. Yeah, and I see, if you look, if you watch the, uh, when we see the replay here, the Pazrilli, you're going to see that, you're going to see that rush come right up the middle. And, and and they just there's just two or three guys that are so close to block that. And the same guy that blocked it is the one that recovered it. That was uh, uh, Lugo. Nice and, job. What a, and I'll tell you what, he was really special on those teams. I mean, and those are the types of plays that make differences in games because the offenses have been shut out here in the first quarter. The difference has been a 68-yard interception return for a score by Amakwa, and now the block punt in the end zone by Aiden Lugo. So... What a special start for the Raiders! Like I said, all three phases. That's what it comes down to. Yep, and it's a tough uh, it, when you when you make uh, when you have miscues um, like that, and and the other team capitalizes with a score. Those hurt a lot more than 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 just a regular mistake. Okay, they're kicking off again, and once again, that is Hinton. Hinton will get to about the twenty-five and not go much further. He gets absolutely thrown backward by a couple of Raiders. I believe one of them was uh, Nick McGovern, the senior. He helped in on that one. Yeah, nice job. They, 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 they've, uh, just three times now, we've seen them uh, We've seen them sprint down, break down, and uh, shed their blocks and, 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 and have nice open field tackles on, the, on kickoffs. All right, so what looks to be the final play of the quarter, once again, it'll be Brady Cordiala saying, let's try this again. As the ball is spot at the 28-yard line. He's in the shotgun, two receivers on the left. They'll give to McKinney. McKinney tries to bounce back, nowhere to go. No. And hanging on to him for dear life was Leo Shiro, the junior, as we have reached quarter time here in Hillsborough. What a start. Hillsborough, 14 nothing over Bridgewater Raritan. We'll have quarter number two right after this. 
When you want reliable work, trust family-owned A&B Landscaping to make your property look its best. With over 25 years of experience, our design team will help create an oasis in your backyard with landscaping, hardscaping, retaining walls, and more. Our commercial customers rely on us for landscaping and maintenance, too. So no matter what type of property, we can handle it. We're the company you can trust, so give us a call today. Now ready to start quarter number two from Hillsboro. I'm Tom Wilkins along with Art Elias and of course the great Howard Gaber behind the controls. 14-0 Hillsboro leading Bridgewater Raritan as we begin quarter number two. And so that I can be prompt, we'd like to remind you that we send our gratitude to the Hillsboro Raider Touchdown Association, of course led by President Bruce Swain who has provided funding for today's game on YouTube. Yeah, you know, Tom, right, we're looking at it. We're looking at a score of 14-0 now after the first quarter. Um, if my... If my memory serves me right, I think these two played last year uh, and uh, earlier in the year, and I think they had a pretty close game with the Hillsboro winning. Um, it was a good slugfest. So you go from uh, what, what a difference a year makes, and again, we don't know how either of these teams was affected by COVID with practice and with uh, personnel, but uh, now we're at 14 nothing right now. Here's Cordial on the first play of the court. He's going to throw a screen to McKinney. McKinney is going to get wrapped up at about the 21-yard line. So not much on the play. Good tackle on the part of Tyler Mishner who made the play. There. By the way, just say it to answer your question, Mark. Art, last year it was a slugfest, and it was a defensive slugfest. Back on September 13th last year, Hillsborough won 13-12. That okay. was the last meeting. Okay, good. Yep. Bridgewater's last win in the series was 31-30 over Hillsborough, and that was back September 2017. Okay, so these two like to, these two like to duke it out, which, again, uh, other than those two mistakes, uh, I, you know, you could honestly say that the first quarter was pretty evenly matched uh, other than making those two big, uh, big uh, game-changing plays. So third down, and here is Kerdyla going to throw one up the middle, and the pass incomplete. That was heading the direction for Connor Driscoll, the junior receiver, but he couldn't come through with it, and that means punting time yet again for the Panthers. Yeah, and Kerdyla is having uh, – he's going to have a problem with getting a good ball – getting a good accurate ball out because he's getting a, a pass rush, and they're just rushing with four players, Hillsborough. And if he can't uh, plant his feet and get that foot – and front foot uh, set to throw, he's going to be, uh, the ball won't be delivered accurately. Okay, once again, here comes the uh, punt and almost blocked again. He got, rid of, he got, he got it off quick there. Yeah, but this nice time bounce. it's going to take a nice bounce for the Panthers and it will roll down to about the 42 yard line. So a good bounce there. And that is where Hillsborough will start and probably their deepest. Uh, Actually, they're uh, furthest back to their end zone that they're starting with at their own 42. I was just going to say, is that Hillsborough's first offensive series uh, not in uh, bridgewater Raritan territory, I'm pretty sure. So. Hey, we got some progress scores hard here. Watch Young Hills, 14 nothing over North Hunterdon right now. Uh, games in the first quarter evenly matched. Somerville and Woodbridge are 6-6, and Ridge and Phillipsburg, they're even at 7 apiece. And, of course, Phillipsburg... They, uh, they, of course, uh, were too much for uh, Bridgewater Raritan to handle last time around. So, they are the top dogs, I believe, Phillipsburg of the uh, of this division. I believe the uh, the five B League uh, division. They're five and one, I think. All right, so first and ten, and here is uh, a pass that's going to be caught and a missed tackle going to the forty, down to the thirty yard line, and once again, Thomas Amakwa at work. We'll get a first down and a gain of 27 yards. Yeah, that's a lethal combination for Bridgewater Raritan. If you can get Amakwa streaking uh, down the middle of the field and hit him in full stride, somebody better be around uh, those legs to take him down or he will just take it to the house. Yeah, he just slipped out of a couple of tackles there and was able to get some uh, major yardage there. So on to the uh, Panther 30-yard line as Masvera in the shotgun, first and 10. Front of Bridgewater, 30. He play fakes, goes back, being chased. Throws one left and a little bit mm. high incomplete intended for Will Dixon, the junior. But I think he was rushed a little bit that time, so he had to throw it a little bit more with a mustard on it. It was just a little too much. Unfortunately, Dixon's been open two or three times tonight, and he's been the victim of some high bo uh, balls. And again, at 6'5", and him going with his arms up, he could probably reach almost up to eight feet high. 
But uh, with the ball being that high off of one hand, it's tough for him to pull that in on a full sprint. I think Amakwa also had one that he almost hauled in off a high throw. Yep. So Bridgewater's defense, I mean, they have bended, but they haven't broken yet. Second and 10 from the 30 as Ms. Vera's going to throw in a pass. That is incomplete and a hard hit. Yeah. And I believe, once again, that's Will Dixon. He, he took he took a look in there. Yeah, makes it and third and ten. Joe Weibold again with another. He was the one that had a, a tackled uh, Makwa earlier uh, when they were going the other way. And he's uh, he could see he's a sound tackler in the defensive secondary there. Nice pop. So third and ten now from the Panther 30-yard line as um, Hillsborough, of course, their head coach, Kevin Carty Jr., trying to relay signals here. Key third down play. They're going to go. With an evenly divided set, looks four receivers back to the right. And Ms. Vera in the shotgun will take the snap. He's looking, looking. Going to take a home run shot. It is. And it's a oh. little high incomplete. And guess who it was intended for? Amakwa. Yep. But like I said, whether it's Amakwa or Dixon, I mean, I feel that um, Ms. Vera is a throwing maybe a little bit too much with the touch of his passes. Yeah, he's not quite, uh, not quite spot on tonight with his balls. He's got him a little bit high and a little uh, full throwing motion when you're back there at quarterback. Okay, so... It'll be fourth and ten. They're going to triple the right side here and give it a shot. Ms. Vera in the shotgun. He'll take it. He's going to roll right. He's looking. He's looking. Pressure. Oh, big pressure. Gets out of a there. tackle, and then that didn't matter. Anyway, was gonna, was not going to make it. He ended up throwing as he was going down, ends up going incomplete. So right. for the third time, Bridgewater Raritan has held Hillsborough on downs, and they're going to get the ball at their own 30-yard line. Yeah, and he saved some yardage there because when he got tripped up, I, I almost thought the referee was going to mark him down because he was almost down when that arm was, was going forward. He hadn't let the ball out yet, so. So he saved himself about uh, about 10 yards on that. And as uh, Bridgewater Rare, and we're going to mention uh, something else after this play here. First and 10, Bridgewater Raritan back with the ball at their own 30-yard line. And nope, somebody moved, I think. Well, I didn't see any uh, penalty markers. And the officer saying, Hillsborough ball! Oh, boy. Wow! Okay. Uh, evidently, there was a missed exchange of the snap. I mean, everyone moved but the ball, and then the ball just squirted out. And we're going to have to take a look at this yeah, on replay. Yeah, I'd like to have a look at that. It happened so fast. I just, you know, I thought somebody moved on the uh, – I thought they were going to hit uh, uh, Brar Rarid and Bridgewater or Bridgewater Raritan with uh, somebody moving the ball. No, I guess – yeah, I mean, the center snapped the ball, but nobody else moved. Well, everyone's got to be ready when that happens, but Hillsborough was a little bit more ready, and that is probably one of the easiest turnovers you're going to get. Yeah, and that's, that's just, uh, you know, that was just a miss with the uh, the snap count. And once the ball snapped, though, if it's a legal snap, uh, the ball's live. Uh, nobody else has to move if they don't want to. So uh, it was very uh, opportunistic for uh, Hillsborough to jump on that ball. Well, amazingly, they forced the turnover, and just like that, Ms. Vera's back on first and tender. Going to go left screen, and Dixon ends up catching it and losing a couple yards on the play. And guess who? My boy Joey Weibolt there, number 14, coming up, uh, coming up hard and hitting hard. Uh, and by the way, folks, we want to thank all of our sponsors and all the fans here who have followed Hillsborough High School this year here on YouTube. And we're definitely going to be back and doing some other things as uh, the months go on. But the most important thing to everyone, please stay safe, especially in these uh, mysterious times that we're all living in. So thank you all for your support. Here we go on second down. Ms. Vera's going to throw one. He's got and him. it's caught. Welcome to the end zone. And now Hillsborough has a score on all three sides of the ball. And Thomas Amakwa has two of them. Yeah, you just cannot cover Amakwa with, with single coverage. Yeah, you, uh, you know, you just can't do it. Uh, he's just too fast and too big and and that's just a tough that's a tough uh that's a tough assignment for a defensive back to stay with him one on one. And that touchdown of course presented by Cater to Fair at Burrow Center. You can call him 908-874-7790, located at 424 Route 206 South in Hillsboro. Boy, <laughs> gonna be a lot of big food there, gonna be uh, coming out tomorrow because of that. But anyway, extra point coming up as Vaughn Colville will try again. He'll try and go for three for three here. The snap, Ms. Vera to hold. The kick, 21 nothing Hillsborough. And what a job by the Raiders. They have scored on all three phases of this game, and we'd like to see this beautiful 31-yard gumdrop to a mock Yeah, and watch uh, 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 Ms. Ware, or uh, excuse me, uh, uh, Mockler, right? Just, just a sprint. 
right up the field. I'm faster than you, and that's pretty much all it is. Is uh, he's just running? He's just running a uh, a fly pattern, and uh, and and the bottom line is get in the end zone. That's where they're throwing the ball. So get there. And he's and he swatted the coverage. No question about that. So Thomas Amakwa, he's been the star today. A 68-yard pick, six return, opening drive of the game, and now a 31-yard touchdown reception from Mazvera. And not only that, the middle score, that was uh, Dixon's um, – no, I beg your pardon. It was Lugo's uh, block punt recovery in the yes. end zone. So Hillsborough, they have basically played as even of a game as you could do, and they made Bridgewater Raritan pay with that untimely turnover. So here now the kickoff. And taken this time on the left and at about the 12-yard line, getting to about the 26, I believe. That was Dylan Corsi, the junior. He returned that one, and Bridgewater Raritan goes on offense again. And it's it's kind of funny. to I, I mean, I don't know how much sense this actually makes saying this, but does it really feel... Uh, you know, like Hillsborough is beating them 21 nothing, Bridgewater Raritan, because again, uh, it's been three, three, you know, kind of bone breaking plays that have just kind of killed them. Other than that, they're, you know, they've, they've done, they've done really well, but the mistakes, uh, that's going to be the difference right now in this first half. Brady Cordyla was about to snap at the right side of the Hillsborough line a little bit too antsy, and that's going to give the Panthers a free five on encroachment. Yeah, I think uh, number four, Missionor, they got a little bit of a little bit of a uh, a step over the line there. He'll try to get a little bit of a head start there. And, and that's the thing, or you got to remember, you may have a big lead, and might you might build into a big lead, but you also got to keep your mental discipline, and not make these little mistakes, yep. especially get later in the year. So on first and five, oh, here's a big hole this wow. time for McKinney. McKinney will get to midfield and step out of bounds there. We'll see where they spot it. It'll be the Hillsborough 46, and that's a first down after a gain of 23. Yeah, we had a great view of that hole that was that they just opened up a huge hole on that left side of uh, – on the offensive left side, defensive right side. And uh, and McKinney's, uh, you know, he's going to – if you're going to get him to second level, he's going to break it out and, and try to take it. Call it the Charlton Heston play with the offensive line because that was an enormous gap for McKinney to run. <laughs> First and 10 to 46 now. Whoops, somebody jumps and the play is off. Might be a false start. It is according to the side officials. So five-yard penalty will back Bridgewater up, and they'll be back at their own 49. Somebody flinched on the O-line there and got just a, just a little bit, but the ref saw it. Doesn't take much, as they say. So it makes it first and 15 from the, the uh, 49. By the way, Hillsborough football brought to you by Norman's Hallmark, located at Nelson's Corner at 601 Route 206 in Hillsborough. Give them a call and check out their sales, sales especially for holiday cards, 908-281-4020. So first and 15, this is McKinney again. He has a hole, try, fights his way back to the line of scrimmage, plus one. So he gets six down to the 45-yard line. That guy, this is a good this is a good player that Bridgewater Raritan has. Yeah, it is. And, oh, and there's, there's a player down, player too. down for Hillsborough. So, so as it, I'm not sure exactly who it is. So why don't we take a quick break here with 9-1 left in the half. 21-0 Hillsborough for Bridgewater Raritan. We'll be back in a moment. Okay, we are back here in Hillsborough. The injured uh, Hillsborough Raider happened to be Jacob Straza Sr. He's slowly walking off. Hopefully it's not too serious of a hit. But in the meantime, after that six-yard pickup at second and nine from the 45-yard line, as Cordyla will again give it to McKinney, and he'll push his way to the right and maybe get two to the 43. Now they're going to say just past the 44. So Hillsborough was ready for that one, and so was uh, Lou Papaduke, the senior, who was able to uh, slow him down. Yeah, they did the defensive front locked that down a little bit nicer. They take a little pride there because they had two runs on them uh, by McKinney. So now they uh, they locked it down good on. Now this is a manageable third down, though. That This is a lot better than what they've had so far for Bridgewater. And Bridgewater has had some plays that have had potential in working, just haven't uh, worked out here. Here on third and seven, here's Cordyla. 
Back to pass. Rolls to his right. He's going to lob it, and it's uh. a little high incomplete. And that was for McKinney, and he had him, but it was just a little bit too much on the pass. So now the question is what you do on fourth and seven. Yeah, well, at this point, uh, you know, it, it wouldn't – it probably – I mean, you could go for it here. You could punt it away and try to put him down into uh, – you know, uh, try to try to cough and corner kick it and get get excellent field position against Hillsboro. But uh, at this point, down twenty one nothing. You know, uh, I, I you know, tendency to go for it here would probably be what I would do. And that's exactly what they're gonna do. Ball spot at the forty three. They have to get to the thirty six. They'll go empty gun, heavy on the left. Cordial in the shotgun takes a snap, looking. Waiting, has time, now dashes. He's going to have to run to the 40, and he's not going to make it. He's about two yards short and gets to the 37. So they kept it. They're going to spot the 38. The Mishnah was able to make the stop, and again, Bridgewater Raritan has turned it over on downs. And has happened a lot on both sides of the ball today. Yeah, and I honestly think he would have got that first down had he did at some point. Uh, you know, he, he's got to tuck that ball and really go. You watch here that he, he, he has protection. It's a four-man rush. At this point, right about here, now go ahead and tuck it and let's get going. Let's try to get up the field because uh, you're not going to make anything happen down the field anymore now. So now you got to get the first down. It comes up a little bit short. And I think there was also a little bit of hesitation on that play. A little we hesitation. Had that stutter step. Yep. That kind of threw things off a little no bit. No doubt about it. So Misvera back in action. First and 10 to 38. Levinitis with the carry. He oh does. Boy. Oh, he got tripped up oh. at about the 45. If he doesn't get tripped up, he's running the Bellamy. Oh, yep. That's going. That's going for. That's going for a score. I think there because he did, Somebody just got a piece of his shoelace. So it's a gain of uh, seven on the play, just outside the forty-six yard line. So it'll be second and a short three. They're going to take a three-wide slot left here. Play fake and a fire, and in double coverage, incomplete. They try to get a Makwa involved, but that was a little bit of a dangerous pass there. Yep, yeah, he's trying to fit that in on double coverage, so he's got to be uh, he's got to be careful. Uh, you go know, again, a lot of time left in the second second quarter here, and and they are hovering middle field here, so in you know midfield, so you don't want to you don't want to have a pick right here and change the whole momentum of your first half here. Well, considering Hillsborough's got a big lead, they just got to keep the momentum, and they they obviously no coming attractions. They'll get the ball to start the second half, so you have to keep that in mind too. So third and about three, a high snap, and it's going to be a keeper. And I would think that high. Oh, and there the ball's, the ball's out. out. And there is Bridgewater Raritan recover and an easy recovery for Colin Cordyla. Yeah. So that is a big play there as Hillsborough turns it over for the second time. And now the Panthers are in business in plus territory. Yeah, and Bridgewater Raritan had it shut down. You'll see he tries to uh, – he gets a high snap, so that fouls up the play in the first place. Now he tries to uh, tuck it and go, and uh, – He's going to be short anyway, and uh, out comes the ball. Ooh, and that was close, too, because that looked like very close having his knee down as the ball came out, but there are no replays uh, up in the booth, so we can't uh, decipher it. So <laughs> We have replay. The referees don't. Well, anyway, first and test. Cordyla back in business. He'll throw right and a little bit wide incomplete, again intended for uh, Dylan Corsi. But I, I will say this much. Brady Cordyla, he's doing his best to get his receivers open. His aim is just a little bit off, but yeah, I think part of it might be Hillsborough's defense pressure. Well, it's yeah, and that, and, and he's got to he's got to get a little better touch on the ball. You know, you, it's that's a that's a six yard quick turnaround pass, and he, you know, that you, you don't want to fire that like you're, you're throwing a thirty yard uh, strike. So. All right, and we have 300 people watching, I understand. So all you YouTubers, thank you so much for watching. Here's McKinney on second down. He'll get his way to about the 42-yard line. He's brought down by uh, Jordan Nussbaum, and that forces a third and seven. So it seems like a same script, different cast for uh, Bridgewater Raritan. Yeah, and McKinney, McKinney had a couple runs, and and uh, and, and now Hillsborough's kind of keying on him now. They, they, they don't want to let him get loose. All right, two receivers on the left. It is a modified eye here on third and seven, and they're going to give it to McKinney. He's going to bounce, cross the 40, slips out of a tackle, gets to the 34. A late flag, I think, came in at the 34-yard line. Let's see what this is all about. And it was behind the play. I, and it was going to be like, I, I don't know if they uh, somebody grabbed a hold of a, uh, grabbed a hold of a face mask. Yes, or not. indeed. Okay, okay, yep, there it is. 
Yep, the face mask call against Hillsborough, and that's going to tack on to the end of the play. So it's going to be a first down nonetheless for Bridgewater Raritan. And that might spot to the... They're going to get 15 yards on this, so... Well, it is a personal foul, so yeah. it would have to be the 19-yard line, and oh, they're going to say the 21. So okay. right outside the red zone is Bridgewater Raritan. They are in business as we're in the midway part of second quarter. So again, two receivers on the left. First and 10 to 21. And guess who? McKinney crosses the 20 to goes. the 10, and he will clear the, the area. Welcome to the end zone. Ryan McKinney ends up getting a 21-yard touchdown score. And uh, our apologies for a little bit of a compromising shot there, but... McKinney comes through, couple of hard, uh, I tell you, he slipped out a couple tackles, and he just kept his feet moving, and 21 yards later, he's hit Paybert, and Bridgewater Raritan punches the time clock and gets on the board. Yep, now they kept going to it, and they kept finding uh, they kept finding holes, and I, I believe I, I, I saw a flashback of the movie The Blind Side there. Uh, Lewis Ryan, number 65, had somebody on roller skates there. I don't know what, uh, what exactly happened there, but she... That was just, that was a tremendous block. All right, here's the extra point by Valera. The snap kick on its way makes it 21 to 7. So Hillsborough's lead cut to 14. And I think we need to see the replay of McKinney's score because that was a thing of beauty. Yeah, it? and you can, it was a nice hole on the right side. And you can enjoy that, enjoy that run. And then kind of at the end there, you can enjoy the block. I uh, just, uh, yeah, and, you know, he just, he, it's all effort, all on him. And then, and then there's number 65 that just kind of, just doing some bad things there. That's uh, that was a that was a great job. That's a way to finish a block. I Louis, I know well, Lewis Ryland's only a junior there, so after the play was over. Oh. But anyway, and all right, let's try Garrett. Up Listen, as an old here. offensive lineman, I used to say, you, you don't hear the whistle, you keep blocking. You don't want to get the coach yelling. At you. So he kept blocking. So I, I guess know. I guess nobody heard the whistle, but well, it happens. Hey, sometimes you get bloopers in football. What are you gonna do? Yeah, no. There's it, if, and again, he didn't get a penalty, so it was nothing late. So good job by Mister uh, Mister Ryan Lewis there, and also Ryan McKinney for the twenty-one and yard score. Ryan and Ryan. So basically, offensively, this game is even. The difference in the game has been the pick six and the block punt for a score. And now a flag is down before the kickoff happens. And we got too many men on the field. Uh, well, Fort Hillsboro. They're, they're they're trying to decipher what it is, trying to make. Let's. I, 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 they're gonna move. It's gonna be on Hillsboro, so I think there's gonna be like an illegal formation, or so. So too many men, I guess, on the special teams possibly. So they're going to move the kickoff to the 45-yard line, and that's where Bridgewater Raritan will boot it. And once again, the man doing it is Sam Valeria, who's oh, going to do a onside. slipper. Oh. And it didn't work because it's recovered immediately at the 45-yard line, and it's the other 35, Leo Shiro, the junior, who was able to do it. So following the penalty... It was uh, the Panthers who wanted to try and do some trickery, but unfortunately, it backfired. Yeah, and you know what? I like the call, but you can't you can't boot it. You got to give it a little bit more of a you got to give it a little bit more of a topper than that because he he kicked it. It took a bounce, but just not. I don't think he hit it hard enough to give it that right when it gets to that uh, defender or that receive. That thing's supposed to pop up and uh, and then it's a free for all. But it stayed along the bottom of the, it stayed along the ground, and that's that's an easy recovery. And nice awareness by Shiro too, as uh, he knew the uh, ball was coming right to him. All you had to do was pick it up, fall on it, and make sure Hillsborough gets the possession. But I like the call. It's the playoffs. There is no tomorrow. All right, first and ten, and here is Levinitis squeezing past midfield, breaks another tackle or two, and into Panther territory, maybe to 43, and that should be a first down. Yep. That's a gain of 11. They'll move the chains. Yeah, and they, they, I, I can tell you right now, Bridgewater Raritan, uh, if they're getting winded, because I see some hands on hips over there on the defense, they need to understand that they're going to get a healthy dose of Levinitis there if uh, – and uh, and and that that sounds like it's terminal, but uh, it, it will be if they don't start tackling them. Well, doctor's office is closed. Here we go on first down. Levin Nias, as we were speaking of, crossing the goes. forty, and his strength sends him down to the thirty-six. 
for another seven yard pickup. And you're saying heavy dose, there you go. They're gonna say 35, that's a gain of eight. Yep, and uh, they're, they're gonna keep pounding it up in there with him and he's uh, he's so low and compact to the ground, you're, you know, you're looking at, uh, you know, you're looking at a, a, like 5'8", 175, that's a, that's a small, uh, you know, uh, import vehicle coming at you there, like the, the way he's running the ball. Well, let's see if they give it to him again on second and about a yard and a half. Ms. Vera says, okay, you do it again. There he, goes. he does. First down, crossing the 30. He'll cross the 20 and shove his way oh. to nearly the 10-yard line into the red zone for Sean Levinitis, and that's another 24 yards on the play. Nice run there. He's, you know, once you get loose, like I said, he gets loose to second level. Uh, you know, start start wrapping up because he's going to take you to the take you to the end zone. Well, he's still in there. First and ten at the eleven. Why not do it again? Left side, not this time. So no gain on the play, and a good job by Matt Messing, the junior, who was able to bring him down. Yeah, it's a good job there. He held his he held the edge there, and uh, and remember, it, you know, we we tend to forget too. Levinitis is the uh, is the leading tackler. Uh, on the defense for Hillsborough, so he plays both ways, and he's in there most of the most of the plays on uh, offense and defense. So uh, he's in he's in excellent shape, and he he can shows it on these runs. He lines up to the left of Misvera on second and ten. This time he takes a play off. Misvera's going to do the running this time. He'll cross the ten. Look out. Leaps over to the five. It wasn't a hurdle play, so no penalty. But he's able to get to the four and forces maybe a third and three. Yeah, the defensive back uh, Colin uh, number thirteen, Colin Cordyla. He he uh, he was looking to uh, to lay a blow on him, and uh, I guess he saw it and took a nice leap up and over. You got to be careful when you're leaping up and over. You got no no protection when you're up in the air like that. All right, so now third and three. The ball spotted at the four yard line. Let's see if they give it to Levinitis here. Ms. Vera will wait the shotgun. Yes, it's Levinitis, and he will push and push oh, and so push, close. and we'll see how they spot it. He may have the first down without scoring. Yep, he got it. To, I thought he was going Yeah, they, in. Gave him, they gave him the first down. Yeah. So first and goal at about the two-foot line, we'll say. And yeah, now this is really, honestly, this drive here is probably the worst that we've seen Hills uh, uh, Bridgewater's defense play so far there. They're really, you know, they're giving up a lot on the run here. So this is this is good work by Hillsborough's offensive line. Here we go. Hand off Levinitis. He sneaks in. Welcome to the end zone. And a flag at the end of the play. So Levinitis clears the area and gets the score. But let's see what the penalty's about. Yeah, he just ducked in. There was a lot of... Uh, there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of traffic right in the middle of the line there, and uh, a lot of bodies laying around. He just ducked in. He could smell that goal line and jump in there. I don't know if they got uh, for a, a face mask or a late. Uh... Well, the touchdown is good for Levinitis, but following the play, there was an unsportsmanlike foul, and it's on Hillsboro. Mm, okay. So, Levinitis, a one-yard touchdown run. That's the good news. The bad news is unsportsmanlike conduct will probably be enforced on the kickoff, and Hillsborough may have to kick off in the 25. So, Levinitis, that was his drive, except for one play. He basically had all but, like, eight, seven of the yards. So. Yeah, yeah that, was a, that was a heck of a drive by uh, Hillsborough there. Just... Colville will try the extra point, but first, more flags. And that's a false start against Hillsborough, so we'll have a 25-yard extra point. By the way, the touchdown presented by Catered Fair at Borough Center, 424 Route 206 South in Hillsborough. Give them a call, 908-874-7790. So we'll try the extra point again. This will be a 25-yarder presented by Iron Peak Sports and Events at 137 Mountain View Road in Hillsborough. Call 908-398-2139. Let's do it again. The snap kick on its way and it loco satellites through the uprights nice job by Culver. so 28 to 7 to score for hillsborough shall we see that levinitis run once again yeah he, and again he's a he's he's a low center of gravity just get that ball and you just duck behind the big fellas and hide right inside there and dive right in there it is right behind number 77 uh that's uh, Mark Gula, uh, Gula, and and uh, he's only a junior. That's a big boy, 6'4", 310 pounds. He's moving people out of there. And I'll tell you, that was a good job. Levinitis able to find the hole and get the one-yard touchdown run. I don't think I really saw anything that was uh, necessarily unsportsmanlike. 
Oh, I'm sorry. So it might have been 88 that might have done something wrong there. But whatever the case, Hillsborough will kick off because of the unsportsmanlike from their own 25-yard line. And, Bridge, and Bridgewater Raritan down 28-7. They're going to need a big drive here. If they're, if they're going to stay in this game, they need to score on this possession. Oh, there's no doubt about it. They could really use a score, especially because, like you said, Tom, Hillsborough's going to get the ball in the second half. So uh, if they could get something going on offense here before the half, that would be uh, huge to the game. Kickoff will be taken. Oh, it's a live ball. Wow. And going all the way back to about the 10 yard line, that's Corsi. Corsi will try and reverse gears and then go back in the same direction and only get to the 20 and then a flag down at the end of the play. That's going to be a face mask. And that's going to tack on 15 if that is so. And that's going to assist Bridgewater Raritan because I'll tell you what, that was a heck of a kickoff. And you know me about special teams, Tom. I don't like to see running, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't like to see running. Uh, East, uh, north, and south. You can, you got to, you got to get the ball up the field. Don't run side to side. That doesn't do anything, and uh, and, you, and, you, and that's what happens. Generally, you get caught and you get uh, and you lose yardage a lot of times, and you, you kind of waste some energy going sideline to sideline. And if you think about it, that kickoff, basically cancels itself out because that went about 15 yards past the uh, final line, but then the face mask just basically uh, made it all up. So first and ten. As the ball is at the 35-yard line. And here's Cradyla throwing a pass. That is tipped and intercepted. It is intercepted by guess who? Yeah, Thomas Amakwa again. There His is. second one and both off of the reflection. I got to tell you, I, I have just deja vu. I mean, it looked like the same exact play. Uh, Bridgewater calling a slam pattern. Somebody, uh, you know, it's the old tip drill. Somebody, uh, somebody tips the ball, knocks it up in the air, and... And Amakwa just, uh, he knows how to sniff that ball when it's up in the air. It's like, I'm there, I'm taking it. Remember, his first interception was a 68-yard pick six. So, meanwhile, for Hillsborough, they'll get the ball back again in plus territory. Do we see more 11 -itis? Well, and that's that probably, and that's the worst thing uh, pretty much that, that could have happened for Bridgewater before the half is that they turned it over and turned it over in their own territory. So, uh, plenty of time. Uh, Hillsborough has all three timeouts, uh, almost four minutes to go, and uh, they, they, why not? All right, they're going to lap a triple on the left side. First and 10 for the 40. Ms. Vera has time, a lot of time. Now he's going to run, and he's going to lob, and the pass is caught at the 15-yard line. Nice grab by Ethan Mays for a gain of 25. You know, Amakwa was lined, number two was lined up on the outside on that play on the left side, and he just does a, does a streak down the sideline and literally clears out the whole side for, uh, for another receiver to come back around up in there. And uh, nice, uh, he dumped it right off into uh, uh, a, 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 an excellent job by, by the quarterback. They triple the right on first and 10 and back in the red zone. Levinitis gets an arrow to the 10, to the 5. Clear the area again. Welcome to the red, to the end zone. <laughs> the red zone's actually the 20. He was already in there. Yep. <laughs> so once again, Sean Levinitis, his second touchdown of the game, and Hillsborough really pouring it on Bridgewater Raritan and making them pay for turnovers. Yep, and those, again, those mistakes will come back and get you, and and uh, we, we, you know, again, they had plenty of time. They the, the whole playbook was open on that series. Uh, three minutes, four minutes to go with three timeouts. They could call anything they want, and why not a why not a uh, pass and then a run for uh, Levinitis? And once again, points off turnovers. As a matter of fact, I mean, we we, we can basically go through the encyclopedia on this. So Colva with a big extra point again. This will be his fifth attempt to snap. Kick on its way, and it is 35-7. to seven. The Raiders over the Panthers. And while we take a look at that 16-yard touchdown run, keeping the firemen busy, calling the uh, noise. Yeah, and uh, Levinitis is just a quick handoff. He tries to go inside, nothing there. Quick break to the outside, and uh, when you know, and a great block downfield by... Uh, by Imaku. you know, they're not throwing the ball to him and what he's doing, he's putting that big, big, strong body in front of a defender down there and blocking for him, so. And really a tremendous, and, tr and he's a tremendous player to say the least. Yes, he is. I mean, Levin Knight is, though he's a senior, he, he really has shown his leadership there. I mean, he knows exactly where to go. If he can sniff where the defense is going, he'll go the other way. He gets his blockers to do, this, do his their job and he'll do his, and um, 
and pretty much the rest is history and Hillsboro really putting a number on here you gotta keep in mind this would be a 21-7 game if it weren't for a defensive pick six and a block punt for a score. Yeah, and throwing, you know, there's two picks so far, and they're and and they're they're not clean picks. They're they're tips and grabs, and but but they all count the same. Kickoff be taken at about the nine yard line, running to about the twenty, and he's not going to get any further than that. Tyler Mitchner able to make the stop there. And I believe that was Dylan Corsi again returning it. He's been very busy <coughs> al- along with um, with Antoine Hinton. They've been doing a lot of returns here. But 3.09 remains to half time. The Panthers have two timeouts, and they still have a chance to make something interesting happen board before the half. They do have a chance to make something happen, but what they don't want to do is uh, is do anything crazy where they are you know take unnecessary chances or make a mistake. So this has got to be good, sound offensive football for the last three minutes here. Okay, first and 10 from the 20. And they're going to get the McKay wow. who took a hard hit and went totally backwards. Jordan Nussbaum went kaboom on McKinney, and he loses several yards on the play. My gosh, he just came off the edge there and, uh, and met him right in the backfield. Again, uh, almost a fumble, uh, just just hit, hitting hitting the back before he even, you know, just doesn't get the ball. That was a 206 514 collision pretty Lord much. Lord have mercy. So a two-yard loss, and it's second and 12 from the 18-yard line. Trying to get some last-second substitutions in. And McKinney is McKinney off trying to break a tackle. He does. Get to about the 20, but that's about it. So Stevens was the one to carry and gets back to almost the original line of scrimmage but forces a third and 10. And Nussbaum, 45 again, is in the backfield uh, creating havoc back there. You can't get, you can't get a running play going without uh, with having penetration like that. And nobody's blocking him. Uh, I, nobody's accounting for him on the left side there. He's just uh, – and I, and I like what they're doing too because they're waiting for Bridgewater to come out. And whatever side they put the tight end on, Nussbaum goes to the other side uh, to try to come off that edge. Okay, here's Cardile on third and ten. In trouble! Down he goes! Down at about the ten-yard line. How about that? Guess who sacked him too? Number 45. I'll tell you, it's a Jordan Nussbaum uh, defensive drive of the game pretty yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. Somebody somebody woke him up and told him, hey, go make some plays. Uh, he Three in a row right there. He absolutely did. And, I mean, just as Levin I has been carrying on the offense, Nussbaum has been leading the defense at least on this drive. It seems like a different star for a different series. Yeah, and the, and that's that's you know being prepared for the game, the coaching, and the preparation. You know, that's just simple defensive football. Uh, they know that Bridgewater's coming out with a one tight end set. Let them come out as soon as they line up. You go to the opposite side, so the tackle is on his own out there. He doesn't have that tight end help. Uh, so, uh, you know, they, they're going to have to they're going to have to identify that at halftime. And again, Bridgewater Raritan can hold their head up because they have been. They have been hanging, but you know, making those making those miscues, causing plays to happen that they just won't, you know, they just can't overcome. Well, they well, what Bridgewater Raritan was doing, they wanted to run as much of the clock off and try and get to a half time to just regroup, but they take a delay a game because of that, and now 44 seconds remains in the half, and they'll try the uh, fourth down, and it'll be punting time yet again for Sam Valeria. Well, oh, the and there's a the co- timeout. Well, the coach on Bridgewater is, is livid on the sideline. Uh, he's yelling at the referee. And he called a timeout just so he could uh, he could say something to him. He's in the huddle there, but I don't. he didn't like something going on. I'm not sure what it was. Well, whatever it was, the timeout's presented by Milan Rose Photography. Call them at 908-369-9600. They're located at 378 South Branch Road, Suite 401 in Hillsboro. Never got a chance to I mentioned them here in the first half, but to say the least, Hillsboro, they definitely have come out prepared for this game, and given that a lot of bounces have gone their way, they've taken full advantage of the opportunities that they've been given. So, obviously, Bridgewater rare, and I mean, they were the ones who called the time out here. I mean, this has been a very frustrating uh, first half for them. I mean, I would say all three phases of the game, if you want to call it that, even though Bridgewater has forced a couple of turnovers. No pressure at all this time for the punt. Yeah, they're at, looking for the return there. but it, Well, there won't be, as it is taken at the 44-yard line. That's where Bridgewater, or that's where Hillsboro will start first and 10. 
Now, Bridgewater has to be very, very careful here because this is, uh, they're in, you know, Hillsborough's already in their territory, and they're not going to take their foot off the gas. And with Amakwa, uh, the receiver, the kind of receiver that he is, don't be surprised if they don't try to chuck one down the field to see if they can get a, uh, you know, get a, get a penalty or get, get somebody loose uh, running. So they're not going to just sit on the ball here, I don't think. Well, by the way, we just want to let you know that at halftime, you'll be seeing some commercials. Of course, our sponsors here for Hillsborough Raider football. They haven't had a chance to maybe have a look at yet, but we'll also have something regarding the Sean O'Hara Foundation. You'll be able to check that out at halftime. But meanwhile, first and 10, as Misvera standing in the shotgun, takes a snap, looking. He's going to throw left side a little bit high and incomplete. That they're trying to get some other people in there. It's intended for Ethan Mays, but it went through his hands. Yeah, looking for Mays coming across the middle, doing a drag across the middle, and again, uh, a little bit high on the pass. So um, when he when when he's able to step up, uh, you know, when Missouri is able to step up, and and again, he's usually much more accurate uh, than he is tonight, right now to this point. Um, but when he's able to step up and deliver the ball with the proper throw, he he's on target. Ms. Vera will throw a screen to Amakwa this time. He'll get to about the 40, try and reverse Look out. gears. Look out. And let's see if he goes. There he goes. Everyone's yelling touchdown. The Look box. Out. Here it is. The 30, the 20. They're right. They're right. Welcome to the end zone. The hat trick for Thomas Amakwa, except there's a flag at the 38 oh. yard line. Somebody blocked somebody they weren't supposed to, I'm pretty sure. And I don't think this one's going to count. They're got, there might be a blindside block against Hillsboro because they called a personal foul. And that's a shame, too, because that was uh, that was that helmet-to-helmet hit. Is that? Uh, oh, yeah, helmet head-on helmet collision. Is, so. That's not good. And uh, that's that's a shame, too, because Amakwa really, uh, that was a heck of a run. He just, you know, he reversed the field, and, and, uh, and everybody was, uh, you know, everybody turned around and got a body on a body, and, and uh, that's that's a shame that he that he's not going to get that one. Well, they'll, they'll put it back 15 yards, and you know, they gave it a shot. I mean, I would at this point, Hillsborough is going to get the ball to start the second half. I just take a knee and uh, just uh, go to go to the locker room. Well, now with 14 seconds, who knows? But you know what? Like I said before, that with 30 something seconds, I knew they were going to take. I knew they were going to try something. Well, here we go with uh, Ms. Vera. He's going to give it to Levin. Nice. He'll give it a try. He'll cross midfield. Let's see if he blocks. The oh 40 boy. slips up a couple of tackles. 30, 20, and he gets out of bounds with five seconds left. So Hillsborough will be able to run another play at about the 19-yard line. A 30, it looks like a 36-yard run. Is this out of uh, Culver's range, uh, Tom, do you think? Or is, he, is this in his... Uh this in his wheelhouse. He's got a pretty strong leg. I don't... If he were to try, it'd be a 36-yard field goal. And Hillsborough can afford to use the timeout if they want to, but they're going to try and go uh, triple on the left here. Take a shot in the end zone here, maybe? Yeah, might as well. I mean, it's pretty much a free play. That's how Bridgewater's defending it. Ms. Vera going back. Clock is going to run out. Looking, looking, looking. Let's it go. And it's caught. Did he keep it Are you kidding me? He did! Are you Welcome kidding me? Welcome to the end zone! Ethan Mays! I tell you, that was a ballerina catch! What an unbelievable catch by Mays. I've seen some crazy end-of-the-half catches, but that one's going to take the cake. Ethan Mays from 19 yards out. What a catch, and what a score for the Raiders. And Mazzara, you know, he, he just uh, he was under a little bit of pressure there. They were only rushing three, uh, three defenders, and he rolls out to his left, and his le- you know, he's a lefty, so that's his strong side, and just was able to set up and rifle that thing downfield. This, I mean, this is almost like two weeks ago, 14 in the first, 28 in the second, and that's, again, the story for Hillsborough as, once again, Colville will try the extra point. The snap. Kick on its way, and the halftime score, Hillsborough 42, Bridgewater rare in seven. Wow, what a first half for Hillsborough. Uh, that, was, that, was, that was unbelievable. Let's have a look at this here. And again, you see three defenders rushing, gets a little pressure, rolls out, gets himself to set here now, and he lets it rip. And look at the, I, that's just that's great, great footwork. 
And that's a great job by Mays. And he all, just stayed with the the whole time. And all you need is one foot in bounds in high school. So yeah, that, and, and you know you can't uh, you know and, and Hillsboro was uh, Bridgewater was the defenders were back. They were they were prepared for the throw into the end zone, but I don't think they were prepared to see Mays in the back of the end zone like that. Generally, the defenders you just want to keep you keep everybody in front of you, but. Uh, what a hook up there for uh, for Hillsborough. He definitely got that right. So here in Hillsborough, the halftime score, the Raiders 42, the Bridgewater Raritan Panthers 7. We're going to go ahead and uh, show you some sponsors, proud sponsors of Hillsborough football you may have not have seen yet. But we'll also show you something regarding the Sean O'Hara Foundation during this halftime. So let's take a break with a 42-7 Hillsborough lead, and we'll come back in just a few minutes. Welcome back. So pleased to be joined right now by Sean O'Hara, who's a former professional football player, three-time Pro Bowler, seven years with the New York Giants. That's correct. Seven years. He's also currently an analyst for NFL Network and ESPN Radio. So you got your hands in a little bit of everything right now, don't you? Yeah, I'm trying to stay busy. Yeah. Um, you know, it's uh, I feel very fortunate to, to have played 11 years in the NFL, uh, four years in Cleveland before I came to the Giants, but. Football has is, is always been a passion of mine, and, and I feel very fortunate that I'm able to stay around the game and stay around the Giants and, and kind of uh, you know, keep, keep my hands dirty uh, with the football field. It's more ink on my hands than dirt these days. How challenging was it for you transitioning out of a career that really forced you to stay fit, stay healthy, um, focus on your, your physical fitness, and then go to a, a career where you're traveling you know, half the week during the entire football season. How do you focus on yourself? How do you how do you make that transition? Yeah, it's definitely been a challenge. Not not having a strength coach, not having somebody that tells you here are the workouts you're going to have to do. So you really lose that structure, um, and, and you, you really l lose that purpose for training. You know, when you're playing a sport, when you're playing football, you're you're training for to get stronger. You're training to get faster, and you have all these goals. So when you no longer are training for that purpose, uh, it, it takes on a different challenge. And as you mentioned, the travel schedule, it's different. Every hotel has a different gym, and sometimes it's, it's hard to, to get a workout in when you're hopping from plane to plane. Uh, I think the biggest thing is now, I, I tell people, I don't train now, I, I work out and, and, and I exercise. It feels different? It's, yeah, it's definitely different. Um, before I was kind of, I call myself a meathead, I was trying to be a power lifter and you know, be as strong as I could be. Now I'm just trying to be fit, uh, maintain a healthy lifestyle, so it's much more cardio, um, you know, much more, you know, wellness, working out and exercising, uh, supplemented with with a better diet. I certainly. How did eat your a lot diet change? Now. I'm sure you were eating for to be a pro yeah. football player, right? Mass calories and and a lot of protein. How do you eat now? Yeah, when I was playing, I called it the seafood diet. If I saw it, I ate it, <laughs> and, and and my wife even would have to force feed me because I was trying to keep my weight up. And when I was done playing, we both realized, okay, I've got to totally change my mindset on eating and. Part of it was almost a relief because I didn't feel like I constantly had to go back for that second plate to make sure that I was maintaining my weight. So uh, that part of it was 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 different. But I think, you know, my wife being a nurse, she realized the benefits 
long term to, you know what, you know, you don't need to be 300 pounds anymore. You don't need to, to continue to eat like that and eat that many calories a day. Um, and also better quality over quantity. So certainly a lot more fish, a lot more vegetables. Uh, try, she's trying to keep me away from the red meat. We're here at Giant Stadium today because NBC, NBC New York, Giants and Hackensack University Medical Center have partnered together to bring this free expo to the people in the community in New Jersey. What do you talk to folks about when they come up and they ask you about how they can stay healthy and, and look to you really as a role model? I think the number one thing is exercise. And, you know, it doesn't always have to be going to the gym and, and, and exercise and staying fit. It can be outdoor activities. And I think that's why today is so great. We've got a beautiful day. And, and just coming out here, you mentioned free. Free, free is, I mean, I mean, everybody loves free, and so to come out here and, and to be able to run around on the field, you know, I've seen so many great young Giants fans, and for them to get to come out here and actually go down on the turf field, they've been to games, and they haven't had a chance to, to run from the 50-yard line pretty cool. and pretend to score that touchdown. So uh, I think, you know, the one thing I just tell everybody is exercise can take all shapes and forms, um, and, and I especially tell young kids, Play all kinds of sports. Don't specialize in one. Don't don't just play one sport because every sport has a different facet to it, and each sport will make you better in, in another sport. Uh, so I think the exercise component is big, and I think it's very important for parents. Y your kids will model you, and they will emulate what you do. So you can't tell your kid to exercise if you're sitting on the couch. So it's very important that the parents are very involved in that exercise component. Can we talk about you for a minute? You got two sure. small kids, right? Yeah. Two small kids, yeah. shout out to that's a kids. lot of exercise, yeah. I, I, well, that, you took the words out of my mouth. You know, yeah. I'm a mom, I have two kids who are about the same age as yours, I think three and, and almost a year. Can that count as my exercise running after those two? Oh, absolutely. Because <laughs> I break a sweat. Yeah, that, that's an all day long workout. Uh, my son will actually be three uh, on Friday, so it's a big week for us. And he actually just met Chase from Paw Patrol this morning. Oh, he came to a local So you're store. a hero now, not because you won a Super Bowl with oh, the New York yeah. Giants, but because oh, your yeah. son just met the Paw Patrol character. He doesn't even know what Super Bowl is, so I, I, I've got to reestablish myself uh, with all these new oh, yeah. ways to say that daddy's the best. And then. Uh, our daughter is 11 months old, so we're playing man-to-man -man defense at home, um, and, and, and that's in itself a workout, and, and it can be exhausting at times, uh, but certainly it's, it's, it's something that, that, that I'm still trying to wrap my head around. Being a dad, it's definitely the coolest job I've ever had. All right, being a dad is cool. Winning the Super Bowl cool? Winning the Super Bowl was the best day of my life and, until I got married, until I had my kids. Good thing you had the Super Bowl win before you had the wife and yeah, kids, right? Because then yeah. you won't get in trouble for saying that. <laughs> yeah, I could say that, you know, as long as I put everything in, in, a, in right. a timeline. Right. Um, but the, the winning the Super Bowl w was the ultimate team achievement. And it's something that my teammates, my coaches, we, we will share that forever. And, and football players are constantly searching for that immortality. And in my mind, you can only really achieve that in two ways. One is making the Hall of Fame. The other is winning the Super Bowl. And uh, you know, I feel very fortunate that I was able to do one of those. And three-time Pro Bowler, what do you miss about football, and, and what have you gained? You know, one of the best parts about broadcasting is when you get to do a game day event, and, and to come out here on game day. And when I pull up to the stadium and I see the energy that's outside, I, I still get goosebumps. Even today, when I pulled up, knowing that there was no game, I, I miss the competition. I miss giving everything to the game. I miss giving everything to my teammates, uh, and I miss giving everything to the fans, because. You know, that, that, that spirit is, is something that you really can't duplicate in the outside world. You know, you say you miss giving to the fans, but you're here today at this Health and Fitness Expo. You are giving to your fans. You continue to give back to the fans. What do you hope they take away from this event? What do you hope they take away from you? Well, a, a number of things. Uh, we talked about exercise. I hope that they take away that, that a healthy lifestyle is, is every day. It's not just one day a week or not just sometimes. Uh, but I also feel like Days like today are great opportunities to, to leave a lasting impression on our, our youth and our children. And I was a little kid that looked up to NFL players and professional athletes, and I hung on every word they said. Um, and so I think today is really about making an impression on them and influencing them and, and helping them to realize that they can achieve their dreams. It, wasn't, it feels like just yesterday that I was a kid saying, man, I hope one day I could play in the NFL. Um, and, and it didn't happen overnight, it wasn't magical. Um, it was a long process and it was a lot of work, but 
uh, I'm here to tell these kids that, that they can achieve whatever their dreams are, even if it's not playing for the New York Giants. You and your wife Amy started the Sean O'Hara Foundation. Talk about it and its mission. Yeah, we started the foundation in 2009, and you know we kind of have a, a general statement. We want to help increase knowledge and education and life-threatening diseases that affect children. And we kind of left it general because we were hoping that we can help cure cystic fibrosis first and then move on to another uh, another epidemic. And, and I think cystic fibrosis has been our main benefactor. But Why? I, I got to know a young man named Sean Squires when I was playing. And I met him. I knew him for maybe a year. And I didn't even know he was battling cystic fibrosis. I didn't know anything about it at the time. And then his father told me that Sean had it. And... Um, I, he asked me if I would get involved in, in helping out with him, and I asked him to educate me on it because I didn't know anything about it. And I found out that, that cystic fibrosis is considered an orphan disease, um, which means that it affects less than 200,000 individuals in our country, but yet the orphan disease label comes from the fact that it gets zero federal funding. So our government doesn't give any money towards research and towards finding a cure. All the money that is raised towards finding a cure for CF is raised from private donations and private events. So my wife and I said, you know what, this is something we can get behind and let's use my name, let's use um, you know, our, our contacts and, and whatever we, resources we can gather to try to help make CF stand for Cure Found. Where can people go to find more information? They can go on uh, SeanOHaraFoundation.org uh, and find out some information. Uh, I also have, I'm on Twitter and uh, Instagram and I'm trying to get hip with social yep, media yep. <laughs> uh, so they can find me on that at Sean O'Hara 60 uh, we actually have our uh, premium annual fundraiser coming up this Wednesday May 18th at Trump National in Bedminster uh, it's a great day uh, I get a lot of my former teammates and, and some current Giants as well as some Jets players and a lot of local celebrities to come out and support that's terrific, and make sure you stay on that social media because your kids are going to know it before you do. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be on it to try to keep an eye on them, too. Exactly. Sean O'Hara, thank you so much. All right, thanks, Sean. That's terrific. Thank you. All right, we are back here at Hillsborough High School, about ready to start the second half, and the Raiders with a commanding 42-7 lead over the Bridgewater Raritan Panthers. I'm Tom Wilkins, along with Art Elias, and of course, behind the scenes, Howard Gaber dealing with all the controls and stuff. How did we get to 42-7? Well, we got off to a very quick start, and it just happened to be on defense to begin things. Yeah, I'll tell you what, uh, uh, Tom. They, we, again, we, we, had a, we had a little bit of a slugging match until this, and then th this happened a couple times here. We see Bridgewater, they throw the ball, and the ball's tipped, and there goes Amakwa, and he's, got, uh, he's off to the races. He's such an excellent athlete, and uh, when he smells that end zone, he could turn that speed on. And credit his credit his defenders they blocked uh, they they got downfield and, and blocked for him real nice so before there was an offensive touchdown that was a 68 yard pick six by Mako by the way the two scores that occurred in the first quarter were both one on defense and one on special teams and the second score was all Aiden Lugo as you can tell the he comes kicker, off the edge yeah. here ducks inside blocks it and, and almost, just, yeah, <laughs> almost like the Colts from yeah. last night against and the Titans. And just and, uh, dives right in that end zone and recovers the ball. Good, <laughs> good scoop and score, if you want to call it that. Well, that was an easy one. It was, a re it was recovered in the end zone for the score. In the meantime, I made it 14 nothing. That was a quarter time score. Then the first offensive score came apart on, uh, as you can see here, as Ms. Vera threw a looper, and there's a Makwa. Easy grab for him. <laughs> And yeah. a 30-yard touchdown strike to make it 21-0. Now, yeah. meanwhile, as for Bridgewater Raritan, they did get a nice drive going. And at 20 at 21 nothing, they found their main guy in Ryan McKinney. Yeah, they bounced back and they they had a nice uh, and McKinney McKinney with a great run here and uh, and we had the uh, we had the blindside block there from the movie uh, Ryan Lewis uh, driving one of the defenders all the way back uh, all the way back into the end zone here and. Uh, 
And but that was a great run. Uh, that was a great run by uh, by McKinney and a good hole, and and that got kind of Bridgewater uh, going, and and they were right there in the game. Like I said, it was a it was a slugfest there, going back and forth, twenty one to seven. Now what happened was they tried a squib kick after a penalty, and it didn't work. So it was Levinitis. It was basically his drive. He ended up getting a one yard touchdown run to make it twenty eight to seven. Oh, that was but the Levinitis drive. That whole entire drive, other than one run by uh, one run by Missouri, uh, he drove the ball right down the field uh, and uh, scored. And then following an interception. It was Levinias yet again, this time from 16 yards out. As you can see here, he'll go up the middle. He's like, whoop, nope, I'll go to Levin. Yeah, it just I, bounces yeah. it in. Great block downfield. Uh, great block bent downfield by uh, 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 Anakwa, and, uh, and it was a nice, nice, uh, nice run. And you know what? We're not. I don't know if we're going to get to that last one because we're about to kick off, but the, the end of the first half will be something to believe. We'll show it to you anyway. Uh, this was unbelievable. Yeah, this is Ethan May. So he's rolling right. Horn stunned for the half, and Ms. Vera's going to throw ye Hail Mary, and there's ye heel catch in the back of the end zone. Really an incredible score by Mays, and that's why it is 42-7 to at the break. And to make things uh, worse for Bridgewater, Hillsborough gets the ball to start the second half because yeah. Hillsborough refused. So here at the 20-yard line, it'll be taken by Levinitis. He'll cross to about the 30 down to the 34. Now, mind you, because it's a 35-point game, it's a running clock right. by and state the, rule. Right, and I believe, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the clock will run until they bring the score back to within 21 points, uh, and then it will uh, then it will revert back to a uh, to a regular clock. Well, let's see what happens here as Hillsborough has it. Um, by the way, I want to say a couple of uh, special crazy shots. First of all, I got a message from Susan in Nebraska who's checking us out here tonight. How about that? Friday night football, so crazy. And she's celebrating her birthday today. So Outstanding. Many, yeah, many happy returns to her. And I'll mention one other thing after this play. It is first and 10 at the uh, 33-yard line as they're trying to sort everything out. Ms. Vera in the shotgun. Might just go with simple running plays at this point. And here's Levinitis. He'll cut 35, 40. He's going to midfield. Oh Cuts goes. again to the 40, to the 30. Is he going to clear the area again for a hat trick? No, he stutter steps at the 20 and stops and is thrown back for about a 46-yard gain. Yeah, just the, that offensive line of Hillsborough is just doing some work up front, and they're really they're really breaking into some holes here. And uh, and they're giving Levinitis, you know, he's not really getting touched until he gets up the field, and and uh, just a nice job up front. And there's nothing fancy. There's no fancy blocking schemes, no fancy reverses or counters. They're just handing the ball off and telling Levinitis to go ahead and run the ball. There is and, a shaking up a Hillsborough player. I forgot to mention there. He's a uh, Making his way up, and that happened to be the man who scored the uh, block punt score, Aiden Lugo. He looks like he's going to be all right. So that was a 45-yard pickup. And, folks, just so you know, um, we did not have a fireworks show at halftime. And luckily this is not fog ball circa Eagles, Bears, New Year's Eve 88. It's a little bit of fog, but it's all condensation from the turf uh, being cold and 42 degrees and two days of rain. I mean, that's going to happen, unfortunately, mid-November, folks. The fog is getting thicker and Howard is getting larger. <laughs> I had a feeling that uh, Art was going to go there. Stephen King would I love I couldn't this. help myself. Anyway, first and 10. Here's a handoff. Ah. Scooting through the 15 to the 10. Levinius gets the hat trick. Welcome to the end zone. A 21-yard score and no flags. And Hillsborough extends their lead that way. Again, just a simple uh, just a simple stop jump, in, uh, and, and he just uh, breaks it upfield and one cut to the outside. And, again, if you're going to get past the uh, – you're going to get Levinitis, uh uh, running the ball that hard, going past the linebackers, getting to that second level, he's cutting left or right, and and he's uh, and he's going to the zone. And the man who never seems to get enough work, Bone Colville, will try the extra point. He is six for six. He goes for seven for seven, and he's got it. He's going to have to put that right leg in ice tonight, maybe. Huh? <laughs> he might, or he might audition. He might audition for next year's Radio City Christmas Spectacular with all there that kicking. Let's take a look at that replay. Yeah, just a, what, and and you like here, Levinitis is lined up on the left hand side, and and uh, the coach just waits to see what they're that what they are in defensively. Uh, uh, Bridgewater and uh, and and there you go and watch he's just going to get a simple handoff he's going to uh, stop gap and 
right here. He just jumps steps to the left, and everybody commits. And now he's uh, he's past the linebackers. Now it's step hard inside, break to the outside, and into the end zone. And I'll tell you what, even though Levinius got to a slow start, I think his uh, coming out party came when um, when after that squib kick after the uh, Bridgewater Raritan score happened. Um, Hillsborough recovered at their own 45-yard line. It's been all 11 nights from there. Yeah, and that was later. Yeah, and you don't have to throw the ball when you have, uh, you know, when you have a runner like that. And and listen, we've seen him do this all year. Uh, and again, uh, we, we talked about it before the game. He's the leading rusher. Uh, and, and if I'm not mistaken, I don't quote me on this. He's either number one or number two in the in the conference in rushing. So. Uh, and again, 7.8 yards a rush, that, that's incredible. And I think uh, th- those runs are going to help his statistics here. Oh, no doubt. Here's a kickoff taken about the 15-yard line. Oh, and there's a big ball crossing the 40. Maybe he, goes. he might run out the coverage to the 30, the 20. He's going to clear the area. But there's a flag down. Hold yep. on a second. And you know what's a shame, Tom? And I saw this as soon as you can't block below the waist uh, on a kickoff. Uh, and uh, and and that's exactly what happened. And uh, the uh, Aiden Lugo, number eighty-eight, was uh, breaking down to make a penalty. Uh, you watch here on the right-hand side. You're, you're going to see. I mean, it's a nice blocking here. I don't know who does it, but uh, they, they just go ahead and go low right there. And you can't you can't go below the waist on on kickoffs. And uh, and that that sprung him. And that play nullifies an eighty-five yard kickoff return that would have been thirteen points for Bridgewater yeah. Raritan. That is. That's just a very tough break, and it just seems like in, almost injury to insult at this point. Yeah, and we've said before, one one little mishap, um, you know, can can turn a whole play around, uh, opposite of what you really what you what you thought you had. Uh, but that's a good call. You have to call that because it, it is a it is a rule in high school that you can't go below the waist uh, when you're uh, first and ten. They're going to spot the ball. Actually, it happened at about the forty. Oh, it was a personal yeah. foul. Okay. Yeah. So there were fouls on both teams. So that's interesting. So they're going to put it first and 10 at the 30-yard lines. I didn't even see the Hillsborough penalty. No, court. I did not. Well, they wanted the kick over again. And they're going to give it to McKinney, and he'll rush. There he goes. He'll get to the 40-42 yard line, and there's Levinitis with a nice tackle there. And the one thing I want to mention, too, um, and, and this is a personal one for me. Crazy shouts to my wife, Donna, who's been my supporter and cheerleader. She and I, 21st wedding anniversary tonight. I haven't been home for most of it, we'll just say. So, so happy anniversary to the wife, and thank you for all your support. We just wanted to throw that out there before this broadcast Will you be on over. the couch tonight, Tom, when you uh, return? I hope a... not. All right, good. I, she's very understanding. She has a halo, uh, I'm sure, over her. And, uh, as we, that, that's great. Absolutely. Okay. And, and considering plans <laughs> change for tomorrow, I might get a dinner in. You know? There you go. <laughs> anyway, that was um, McKinney to the 46-yard line for another 12 yards and a first down. So Bridgewater Raritan's not giving up in this one. And they're trying to get whatever positivity they can here in the final quarter and a half. And again, McKinney will have a carry. He'll break to about the 40 and maybe get to the 38. So a couple yards short of a first down, but he, he's still playing hard regardless oh, of the boy. score. Yeah, guys guys doing silly stuff after the play. And oh, there, there's are, a, I didn't see it. Yeah, it's a, flag yeah down. a couple guys jarring. I'm not sure who they're going to get, if they're uh, who, who uh, did the most talking, but... You know, they're button helmets, and they're talking to one another, and the ref's not going to stand for it. And Nussbaum acting as the seventh referee in this particular call. <laughs> yeah. So He's calling the play. <laughs> well, uh, the preliminary indication uh, minus that is that the penalties against Bridgewater Raritan. It is a personal foul, and indeed, oh, it could be offsetting penalties. Yes, offsetting personal foul penalties. You know how I feel about those, Tom. As a former official, those uh, that's called the easy way out, and uh, I, I, I just never really liked those because somebody did something first, and that's who they should have got. But. It was after the play, too. So yep. it stays second and two from the 38-yard line. And again, McKinney, he'll get to the 35. Speaking of uh, the aforementioned uh, Nussbound, he makes the stop, but it's a first down for Bridgewater Raritan. <clears throat> yeah, and they're going to run, uh, they're, they're, you know, like I said, they, they're, they're going to go back to the, p- coach is going to go back to the play sheet with the plays that had the most success in the first half because that's about a role that they can really uh, do right now and, and just keep making positive yards. And they're they're already in hurry-up mode, so uh, 
So I, li- I, I like them coming out, running the ball. In I formation, first and 10. This is a play action play. And there's a deep throw left side. A little too high and incomplete. That was headed for Colin Cardilla. Obviously, uh, Brady to Colin, so brother to brother. Just a little bit high on that. It's incomplete. Yeah, Matthew Omofa, defensive back, number 21. Good coverage, sticking right to him. And uh, and uh, and that's a good job downfield and and it's it's very good job that he didn't uh that he didn't bite on that uh he didn't bite on that play fake and by the way forgot to mention that we are grateful for hillsborough raider touchdown association of course led by president bruce wayne who of course provide funding for today's game here on youtube and for those of you watching we're very happy that you are with us uh on second down somebody jumped the line so a flag is down Looks like it's going to be on Hillsboro, but you never know. Yeah, they're going to get the defense for that one. Don't forget, in high school, you can jump in a neutral zone, but once you do that, the play's automatically dead. You can't jump back like in higher levels. So that'll be a five-yard penalty back to the 30, and it forces a second and five. So if anything, I will say that um, for Bridgewater Rare, and they're coming through at a pretty nice drive, very heavily relying on the senior back, Ryan McKinney, and, of course, probably a special drive for him considering uh, how this has uh, been as far as the outcome is concerned. Second and five from the 30. And speaking of McKinney, he's going to run around to right, sneak through a hole, carry defenders inside the 20 into the red zone, down to about the 17. That's a th- nice 13-yard gain in a first down. Yep, nice hard run there. Good staying low to the ground, uh, good low center of gravity, uh, and uh, making good positive yardage. So that'll force a first and 10, and they're going to spot the ball at the, we'll say, the 18-yard line. So that was a gain of 12. So once again, McKinney lines up to the left of quarterback Brady Cordyla. Let's see what they do. Two receivers on the left. Hillsborough looking to play this again. Now it's going to be a keeper for Brady, and he'll get to the 15, and basically goes about the 12 before he's driven way back by 11 Nidus, and there's a flag down probably at the end of the play. And look, I'm so, I thought time stood still for a moment. Yeah, and why not Levin Nidus making the tackle? He does everything else out there, so... Uh... So you, he's just he's just, he's very very good football player. I, I, I love watching him play. I think it's an illegal motion foul against uh, Bridgewater Raritan, so that nullifies the play anyway. Yeah, I, th- I I you know I thought they were going to kind of let it go, but they called it an illegal shift because the fullback uh, kind of took a took a like a like a lunge. For, he went from he went from uh, being in a uh, two point stance down to a three point stance while the ball is being snapped, or a one and a half point stance, Something and that means like you're that. moving forward. And yeah. speaking of moving forward, uh, there the you left go. side of the line just did that, and that's going to cost him another five. Uh, Mr. Ryan, there he was. Uh, that's my man the, that did the blind side block there, number sixty five. So, well, while while we do that, let me run down the people <laughs> from that Hillsborough Raider crew. President Bruce Wayne, Vice President Ernie Santarelli, Treasurer John Von Essen, Corresponding Secretary Karen Malillo, Recording Secretary Helnon Fenimore, Game Day Person Fran Letty, and the Media Guide Person Mark W. Doring, all members of the Hillsborough Raider Touchdown Association. Again, thank you guys for your support. Looks like a broken play here on uh, on first down to keeper by Cordyla and he gets to about the 20-yard line. Yeah, and that's the second time we saw that play because you remember what happened in the first half with that play where the center snaps the ball. I don't know what Bridgewater calls it, but the center snaps the ball and nobody moves. Uh, so the, that's why the ball's on the ground. And uh, luckily that the quarterback picked it up that time. But in the first half, same thing happened. And it was a turnover at the most worst time right after they had scored. Uh, had a good defensive series, got the ball back, and they, they gave it right back to Hillsborough. So they triple the left, and this time McKinney will come around to the right, and he'll crash to the 25, still <clears> pushing <throat> into the 10. He's inside the 10. I think you know. I think Hillsborough thought he was going to get bounced outside. It, it, I, I've said this on numerous occasions. The 12th defender on defense is a sideline. Use it. Knock the guy out of bounds. That's that's for your benefit and uh he was kind of tiptoeing right along the sideline there uh, getting good positive yardage and he actually got enough to get himself first and goal from about the seven yard line so obviously they're relying real heavy on mckinney the senior i'm back with a fullback here now the number uh sal sakali 
Well, here's McKinney. Has a hole, crosses to five, and he dives in. Welcome to the end zone. That'll make him feel good. Ryan McKinney, the senior, he he at least gets a taste the end zone for the second time in this game. That puts up Bridgewater some more points. And for Ryan, even though this might be a disappointing finish, I mean, two touchdowns today for him personally. I mean, that 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 one has to be special for him. Yeah, and it, I, it does a nice job. He's again the little handoff up the middle, good blocking, good work up front, and uh, and the, the, he, he just running real hard, low center of gravity, and uh, nice job. Here's a snap, kick on its way, and it's definitely good. And then there might be a leaping foul against Hillsborough. Yeah, anyway. you can't <laughs> jump over your defender. Yeah, that's and, and you know what's funny? Uh, no, well, not funny, but uh, Will Dixon, the tight end, he and defensive end, he did that in the first half, and they didn't call it uh, on an extra point. Well, he did it now, and they, they that was pretty obvious. So that, they they're I, gonna hit him with that. I think that was more obvious than the first time. Maybe we can check out the uh, re- replay on a McKinney score. As we take a look here, courtesy of Pez, and and this guy, this guy's a very hard runner. As you can see, he gets yep, up nice the middle, hole. breaks a couple tackles, doesn't give up, and slides his way in for an eight-yard touchdown run. So, yep, good n- hard, nice run. job, n- nice job by him. By the way, just so you know, Pez Electric sponsors all replays uh, for Hillsborough football, located at 14 Eileen Court Building 11 in Hillsborough. Give them a call at 908-281-7399 for all your electrical generator, professional heating, and cooling needs. Now, I think, be- oh, okay, I see what, what we, we have here. Because of the leap, that's an automatic 15-yard penalty, and Bridgewater Raritan's going to kick off in plus territory, which you, you don't see very often. And how about a non-side kick here? Because uh, whether you get it or not, you still have... Uh you still keep in Hillsborough on their side of the field. And they tried that at 21 to 7. It didn't work. And then it was 28 on the answer for Hillsborough after that. And that basically settled things. Give it a little more of a tap there. Well, a little too much of a tap. And that's going to go into Amwell for a touchback. And that really doesn't make too much sense to me. I'm just not sure why you would do that. So uh, why not try the onside kick? I'm not sure why you'd kick it out of the end zone there. But uh, eh, whatever it may be. Uh, but that's. Uh, but that gives uh, that gives Hillsborough a little, that gives Bridgewater Raron in a little bit more, uh, you know, <clears throat> a li- excuse me, a little bit more uh, better feeling about the whole uh, the whole uh, thing going on with the game here because they they really were down and 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 kind of had an avalanche of things happen, uh, some bad plays and some some miscues and before you know it, uh, you blink and you look up and there's 49 points on the board, uh, uh, so or 42 points on the board, so. So that's nice. I'm glad that they scored, and and uh, you know, and maybe they get make a little stop on defense here, and and feel good about themselves. Well, they're bringing some other uh, players in to uh, get some time in. It looks like because Levin is on the sideline for this one, but Mizvera is still in there. First and ten, they're gonna sweep it to the right and crossing into the 25-26 yard line is uh, Tyler Mishnard who gets a rare carry, and the clock will run down to three quarter time. So. We're going to keep it here as it's uh, 49-14 Hillsborough at three-quarter time, and we got another 12 minutes of football still to go. So, or, I mean, I, I think this has been this has really been a lot of fun, and I'm sure all of you who have been watching for Hillsborough, I mean, we got to thank all you fans for your support for everything that you've done, of course. Those of you watching on HSG Network, face, and, of course, we have Facebook, we have Instagram, too. Please like Please follow. Please subscribe on YouTube. We still have plenty more stuff. We've got some good things coming on Sunday, too, that are on HSG Network. So keep your eyes out on that. And, uh, Tom, I don't think our fans really realize how excited Howard gets when you do follow and like the pages. I mean, it really... It really makes his day, and uh, and if you if you're if you're a fan of Tom or or, or myself, uh, you'll go ahead and do that because it makes life easier for us when Howard's in a good mood. So uh, we do enjoy that, and it does help us out, and uh, and we appreciate you doing that for us. I had somebody contact me a couple weeks ago saying, uh, "Oh, this is the type of football you do. It's American football." I didn't realize the person lived like in Austria. So okay, <laughs> hey, it's a little different here, but you know what? Hey. It's a sport, it's competition, it's fun, and hey, you got to love what you're doing. That's one thing I definitely love doing here, despite my, in spite of my usual work. I mean, As do I. Hey, got to do what you got to do. That's, that's what life is all about. All right, about, here we go with the final quarter now. It is second and probably about two 
from the 29. Probably going to be run after run after run here. And Mishnard's going to try it again, but he's not going to get back to uh, the line of scrimmage. Yeah, the man short. behind that one was Ryan Driscoll, the junior, made a good tackle there. Yep, yeah, Driscoll, number 57. Nice job, good job up front. Uh, and again, holding that edge, defensive end, the linebacker on the outside there, uh, not letting anybody bounce to the outside there. Good job. Make it third down. And again, if they could get off the field here in third down, uh, Hillsborough's punting from deep in their own end zone, and, and uh, they might, you know, they get good field position. Okay, Ms. Varon the shotgun here on third and we'll say about two from the 29-yard line. Laying some timer off the clock here. Making sure everybody's in position. Now ready to um, make it. It's a snap. And they're going to sweep it around. Mishnard again. He'll have a first down. Oh, he pulls a stiff arm. And it goes out of bounds. About the 39 gets tackled out of bounds. And that's going to attack 15 more. Yeah, Mishnard uh, gave somebody a stiff arm there, and uh, you see him able to bounce this out. Now, just previously, the play we talked about, the defensive end and the outside linebacker here held the edge. Now, you see where the edge collapses, allows Mishnard to kind of come up to the line of scrimmage and then bounce it, take that thing to the outside, and he delivers a stiff arm on somebody here that... And just pushed them straight back when they were going up to tackle them. So and let's see, see how that was. Watch the, his hand. Yeah, pulled the guard oh, under. Yeah. Oh, man, that was quite a stiff arm. And he gets out of bounds, and then after that gets thrown down, which was unnecessary <clears throat> after yep. that. So. Yeah, a little hit laid out of bounds that's going to tack on some yards. He stepped out of bounds at his own 40. 15 more means the Bridgewater 45. And that's where we are first and 10. Now... What's going to happen, Hillsborough's going to let as much time as they can go. They'll see an official's arm go up, which signals only a few seconds left before the play clock. So that's what we're doing. Remember, we have a running clock. And let's see how things are first and 10 as we're waiting on uh, an official timeout here. Yeah, and she has the 45-second clock. Yeah. And at 10 it's seconds, she puts her arm up to signal the last uh, or the last five seconds. All right, here's Mishnard. On the carry, but, oh, he got hammered behind the line of scrimmage. And once again, right there, Ryan Driscoll made a great tackle there, forces a loss on the play. Yeah, and Keshava Pana there, number 55, who's uh, working on the O-line tonight for Bridgewater, uh, playing tough defense. I, we called his name earlier uh, in the first half and doing a good job up front there. And I, for, and I forgot to mention the uh, Bridgewater staff, led by head coach Scott Bray and assisted by Joe Cahill, Joe Chetta, Colin Clifford, Vince DiStefano, David Dimeshk, Michael Francino, Ed Knapp, James Davis, Austin Abney, and Evan Rosenberg. They are the staff that make up the Bridgewater Retterton Panther football team as we have second and 13. And here's a handoff, and <laughs> guess who? Ooh. Driscoll. Driscoll's not going to be uh, playing this one. And. <laughs> No. Ends up being a loss on the play. Of course, at Bridgewater Raritan, the athletic director is John D. Maggio. A principal is Dr. Charles Azell and superintendent Dr. Thomas Ficara. So another loss on the play, and it forces a third and 18 from the back Hillsborough back in their own territory at the 47-yard line. Two runs in about 10, 12 yards of uh, minus yardage on those last two plays. And two very hard hits to go along with that. Waiting for the official to put the arm up at the 10 second mark. There it is. So here we go. Third and 18 from the 47. And Misvera will keep it himself. He breaks out of a tackle and gets to about the midfield stripe. So he got three, but now Hill Hillsborough can punt the ball away. Yeah, Colin Cordella, number uh, 13, had him uh, had him da back in the uh, in the backfield and just let him slip out, but held him long enough for his guys to come up and uh, stop him short. The, the, I guess we can officially say that 13 is the number of the day. Yeah, no doubt about it. All right, so it'll be fourth down and punting time now. And Bridgewater Raritan will have one more shot here. I'm telling you, Culver's leg is going to be in uh, in an ice bath tonight. <laughs> yeah, he's got on a big time workout today. Seven extra points, a couple of punts, but and of course he's also uh, done some kickoffs too. Last second, a uh, substitution is a Papadou comes in. So now I'm fourth down. Good snap. They don't pressure, and a good punt. I guess his leg isn't tired. It's going to roll oh, out nice of roll. bounds at about the five. They're going to say the six. 
Yeah, you got the good roll. Again, you're 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 punting and uh, you're looking for that boundary for that ball to bounce between the numbers and the sideline. And it it took a nice uh, it took a nice Hillsboro roll right to the six yard line. Actually, the ten yard line. I miscounted. Oh, my uh, bad. Ten yard, yard line. line. No, that's my bad. I'm the one who oh, gave okay. you the wrong information. Here. All right. <laughs> so, but anyway, Bridgewater Rarids will get one more crack at it here in the uh, final stages of this one. And really, in this game, it, it all began with uh, Thomas Amakwa, of course, scoring on defense, of course. He had a touchdown reception as well a little bit later in the first half. First, two, inter two interceptions tonight. Right? That's true, too. And yeah, I think they're gonna have a new back here as they get to about the 16-yard line. A couple young bucks in here uh, running the ball now first tonight. Maybe. Yeah, they're giving it to Antoine Hinton. He, uh, he appeared on Good. special teams um, throughout on, on some of the kickoffs, and here he's going to be the featured running back. McKinney, at least, he at least ended his night on a good note. I mean, I don't have numbers uh, for yardage, but the guess is he's probably over 100. But two touchdowns on the day, you know, that, that's still a very good player. Second and five, you know, spot the 16 here. And again, that is Hinton, and he's able to maybe get a yard, and then he's driven back in a late flag. And let's see how what this turns out to be. Well, guys, got to be careful because, you know, you, you, you get thrown out of a game here, you sit next week, and you don't want your season to end like that. And this is a nice hole here uh, on the right side, and it filled pretty quickly. Um, and then I guess, uh, you know, a couple guys got, you know, yeah, right there. That was uh, number 65 and number 88 there, just kind of doing doing some late business there. Well, nonetheless, it, it was a late flag, but it's going to be a first down, I believe, because of the uh, penalty here. Yes. Ball spotted right outside the 20, and now we're going to have, I guess, an official timeout to make sure everything is uh, on the up and up here. Actually, no, actually, the penalties against Bridgewater Raritan. I beg your pardon. Now that that flag came very late. And so it went against Bridgewater Raritan that time, and I believe it was after this since the goal. They might have done the uh, the double march off there where they uh, they marched. That, that was probably offsetting penalties on both, and then they, they march it off 15 out, and then they go half the distance because it's still – inside the 30 so uh i'm gonna have to do some studying this week yeah here because <laughs> you have a headache and, and right? if, if it were a close game i'd be scratching my head but first and 10 as the handoff again goes to about the we'll say the 15 yard line once again getting to work antoine hinton the sophomore as he's able to get a couple yards there as we're under four minutes till time and it'll be second and i believe about six coming up I'd like to see Mr. Hinton, the young guy there. I'd like to see him hit that hole a little harder. Don't uh, don't uh, pick up uh, bad habits from Le'Veon Bell bouncing around. Uh, you watch the NFL, and these guys do a lot of different things that uh, you pick up some bad habits watching them guys sometimes. But, uh, yeah, get that ball and get north and south. You know, get your shoulders square. Get inside the hole there and get up the field and uh, – and you'll get good yardage every time. Okay, so it'll make it'll be third. It looks like third and six. They want to make sure they got the uh, down marker right. So here's a handoff again. Antoine thrown down the line of scrimmage, and that's actually a very nice tackle on the part of Kevin Shelton, the sophomore, getting some playing time late. As yep. we're coming up to three minutes till time. Yeah, he kept his fit. One, one thing he did was he didn't fall to the ground and he didn't lean to try to make the tackle. He kept his feet. He kept his feet running and he ran with that. He ran with that offensive player right to the sideline and brought him down. Okay, so fourth and six. As as the ball is um, going to be spotted right outside the fifteen yard line, we'll see if um, they decide to go for it one more time. We'll definitely have some people to thank here before we go off the air. But like I said with HSG New York, remember to like and to follow and also subscribe. As we are going to have, I think. Uh, a timeout called by Bridgewater. So 2.25 left. We're going to go ahead and do that right now. Of course, all of us here at the HSG Network and the Hillsboro Raider Nation there want to thank the following sponsors. Pez Electric, Milan Rose Photography, Cater to Fair, Iron Peak Sports and Events, Norman's Hallmark, A&B Landscaping, the Sean O'Hara Foundation, and, of course, the people who, who provide funding for today's game, 
the Hillsborough Raider Touchdown Association. You can't say so. enough about the Touchdown Association, dude. They do a nice job, and they, and I'll tell you, they, they, they this, it's a big undertaking, uh, w- especially with everything going on with COVID, to get these games, uh, to get these games, uh, t- you know, uh, uh, happening and 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 creating a great atmosphere here and and having us. Uh, uh, do their games uh, live stream. It, it, it's a very nice. Uh, it's a very nice job by the club. And and we want to thank all the people who have been watching with us. I know there are plenty of other services that provide other games and what have you. And of course, thanks to Howard and Company, we've been able to uh, pr- provide things with, uh, I guess, our own style, maybe our own twist at times. And I know sometimes we may not make sense on some of the things that we say, but we always try to keep it entertaining for you because hey. You guys are the ones who keep us going, and we appreciate each and every one of you yes, who we have do. Uh, followed us here, especially uh, through this season. So, so please remember, with HSG Network, like, follow, and on YouTube especially, subscribe, because there's going to be plenty more coming in the coming weeks and months. So, But the most important thing to everybody, no matter what, please stay safe for yourself and, more importantly, for your family, because... It's back, and we don't want to have any more casualties. So please, everybody, stay safe. Wear the mask. Follow, follow the instructions. Do the right thing. That's all or, you got to worry yeah, about. As they always say from uh, somebody whom I remember was a great advisor from some years back, do the right thing for the right reason yep. all the time. the time. Anyway, now we're back to it looks like punting for um, Bridgewater Raritan. Hunter's standing at the uh, three-yard line. He'll take it. And a halfway decent punt. Hey, drove him back. That's good. That's, that's and a nice neutral job. bounce, which will be down at the 44-yard line. That is where Hillsborough will take over. Run a couple of plays, and I'll close the door on this one. So, Art, what do you feel really was the difference in this game? Well, what turned it? <clears throat> well, you know, again, we, we, uh, we kind of, uh, you know, we were watching a good we were watching a good game in the beginning here where they were just kind of going back and forth and, and feeling each other out and just, uh, you know, we, we blinked our eyes in a couple miscues and it was 21 nothing. So so uh, Bridgewater uh, answered with that score, 21-7. We're still having a game right now because uh, sitting from up here, I'm feeling good about Bridgewater, right? I'm saying, well, you know, they're in this game. They're playing hard. Defense is making stops. And then again, a couple miscues. That second quarter just did him in. Uh, it, that was a disastrous uh, second quarter for them. Uh, and and that just is too many mistakes and a couple a couple miscues. And, and again, we blinked our eyes and it's 42-7. And that was pretty much it. Now, yep. as w- they're about to run victory formation here to wrap things up, this is tentative, folks. Next week, the Hillsborough Raiders will be at Edison. Next Friday night. Again, tentative. Hillsborough will be at Edison next Friday night. And it's a 7 o'clock game. Um, make sure you also um, check for other information in the high school and what have you. Two quick kneel downs, and that will do it. Hillsborough is a winner over Bridgewater Raritan by a score of 49-14. to 14. Impressive one today for Hillsborough, Art. Yeah, no, they definitely uh, they, they, they played a great game tonight. A good, good complete game. Uh, they they were opportunistic uh, when they had the when they had the chance to uh, to go ahead and, and get some turnovers and get some scores and and they showed their big playability uh, with uh, with uh, with some some passes downfield and and they showed that they could grind it out too by running the ball real hard and and uh, they did what they had to do on defense uh, gave up uh, you know 14 points. And that's uh, most times you'll win giving that up, and that that's a gr- good all-around win for them today. And both teams showing their uh, sportsmanship from across as per COVID regulations to finish. So that'll wrap things up here from Hillsborough High School, and that was an impressive win for the Raiders. For Art Elias and Howard Gaber, I'm Tom Wilkins. Thank you for joining us again. Your final score, the Hillsborough Raiders 49 and the Bridgewater Raritan Panthers 14. Remember, tentative Hillsborough against Edison in Edison at 7 next Friday night. This has been a presentation of Hillsborough High School Raider football in association with YouTube and the HSG Network.